some people don't know if they're getting buried or if they're being planted. Mm. Right? And so they look the same. Mm. They oh, look similar. Geez, boy. They look similar. Right? The difference is one is the end of life. But one is the beginning. Mm. Right? And so in my mind, adversity is me getting planted. It's never me getting overwhelmed. It's never me getting buried. It's, oh, I'm being planted. Yeah. I just got to nurture myself now. That's the only thing is I'm self-nurturing. Right? I, I don't need a lot of the outside people. Like, they say, like, the love land. I don't need the words of affirmation because I can nurture. I'm, I'm going to get it from here because I'm going to use what I've been through as what nurtures me. 19 keys is a high level conversation. Tap in with the God. Peace family, welcome back to another high level conversation. Today, I have a very powerful human being, a person that knows themselves very well, a person that vibrates at the highest level of energy and frequency. Every time I see this brother, matter of fact, every time I speak to this brother, you know, we create universes. It's a whole university inside the cypher conversation that we have. I see this person as uh, one having the ability to transmute energy. You understand me? To take something from the darkness and to bring it in light. And I see a person who has been going on their journey, condensing their energy. And as they walk through rooms, they vibrate with an aura. They vibrate at a high level. And this is not something that I see in all human beings across this space. You know, people consider themselves to be peers, but everybody not at the same level. You understand me? This is a person that is living within their edge. And not only at their edge, but sometimes a little over to make sure that they pushing themselves to higher limits. Taking the information of Wall Street and bringing it to all streets. You understand me? And of course, this person is none other than the methodical, systematic, brilliant, black giant of a genius, Wall Street Trapper. What's good? What's man, good? What's good, in. brother? How the brother doing? Ah, good to see you, guys. Definitely, man. Definitely yes, a pleasure to just politic with God. I appreciate the opportunity. You know, I already know this. You have the right name for this. Yes, this sir. This is accurate. Yes, sir. High level conversation. Yes, sir. Well, um, but it's like what I talked about with you was, uh, this is the norm for us. Absolutely. We we don't we, we don't have any low level conversations. Nah, this is the norm for us. I don't have low level conversations. Period. Facts. Because I don't have time for it. Facts. Everything that I want to do, I want to vibrate at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to talk to something because we were talking a little bit off camera before this, and I want to talk about living in your edge. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Um, it's a concept in a way of the superior man where they talk about living mm. in your edge. And it's a concept I've been diving in a lot. And this is how a person can know whether they have more room to grow, more edge to grow. Mm -hmm. When you just think about your life and you think about the more amount of money you could be making, the more mm -hmm. accomplishments you can have, the bigger, grander vision that you have for yourself and knowing that you're kind of far from your greatest level of potential. You understand me? And when you're around men and women who not living in their edge, specifically men, they're not respected at the highest level mm -hmm. because we know that there's a greater level for you. And even if a person, they might not help you get there, but they see it for you and they know that, that it's your job to get there. Mm -hmm. They're like, wait a minute, you doing it at this level? That's cool. I had a partner tell me about my, my illusions before. Mm -hmm. At the time, I had a storefront in Oakland, California. You know, and I was going through a little struggle. I'm I'm struggling with bills, mm. trying to keep everything rolling. So I started, when I go around talking to people, I tell them about how great the store was doing because I needed them to see me through that filter. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because that was the greatest level of accomplishment I had in my life at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was like, man, fuck all that, man. That's an illusion. You're way bigger than that store, friend. Mm -hmm. He said, you're way bigger than that. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't start to see yourself as that. It's mm -hmm. so many words. And he said it just in casual conversation, but I stopped and freeze framed that piece mm -hmm. because I took it home with me and I thought about it. I said, damn, he right. I've been seeing myself through the illusions. You understand me? And then I started to revision myself and remember who I was. Like, man, I'm a whole God body. Mm -hmm. Like the maximum of where I can go is infinite. Mm -hmm. Yet I'm over here having conversations about minimum accomplishments that mm -hmm. are just steps. It's nowhere near the destination of where I want to reach. And so I'm having that same conversation with myself now. 
asking myself, am I living in my illusions? Or am I actually at the edge of what I can do at the greatest and at the highest level? Mm -hmm. And so we all have different edges in life. It can be the way we think, the way we speak, the way we talk, our skill sets, the industries that we in. And some of us live at that edge and some of us try to, at certain points of time, go a little above that just mm -hmm. to push the limits. And those are the greatest amongst us. And then some people are comfortable where they at. Mm -hmm. They are not trying to push through that air. They say, man, I got what I got. I think this is good for me. Mm -hmm. That's why when you have conversations with certain people and you talk about the ambitions and the vision, they switch the subject thinking you're doing too much. You understand me? And those are not the type of people that you need to be around when you're trying to vibrate at the highest level. You need everything to be vibrated because vibrational training is a technique. Mm -hmm. That if I'm going to have a high level conversation, I'm not about to right before this go be watching a, a dumbed down movie. Right. You understand me? No. That means that even in the background, my subconscious, you know, I got something playing about the laws of the universe. I got every conversation I'm having because it's training me consistently to be vibrating. So everything mm -hmm. I think, everything I say, everything I act, how I produce, everything will be at a high level. So it's like training a muscle within yourself. And I, I asked people, I said, Imagine if you fasted from everything in your life and you only tuned in to high level conversations, mm -hmm. right? You would only be at a high level because you will only be able to pull from thoughts that mm -hmm. vibrate at a high level. Mm -hmm. That would be your only influence sphere, right? And when a person wants to live at their edge, they have to surround themselves by other people that's living at their edge. Mm -hmm. And I say that because as I see you today and I feel the energy that comes off a trap, you vibrating at your edge. You understand me? Like it's radiant within. Mm -hmm. It's like when it's, it's it's like you know, uh, seeing a bull going to that red. Mm -hmm. They running towards it, but it ain't even the red that is really what the bull run to. The bull run towards the motion. Mm -hmm. You understand me? The bull runs towards the vibration, the energy that it sees. And I, you, one of them human beings that I know is pregnant with a thought that once you get it in your mind, it's already done at a different time in reality. Mm -hmm. No plan B and C and no. D and E and F. The alpha, the rest of the alphabets, I don't even need mm -hmm. them. A was enough for me. Alpha. <laughs> yeah, plan alpha. Plan that alpha. was it. That's, it. <laughs> that's the that's the alphabet. That's you understand it. me? I'm betting on myself. That's it. This episode is brought to you by Infinite Wealth Strategies. So, how do you feel? You know, number one about that concept of being at your edge. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're going toward that? Mm -hmm. So I always tell myself as a daily reminder that we provoke by purpose, mm. right? And what that sent with for me is understanding like what trap came from. Yeah, I, I realized that every day that I got up when I was in the trenches, that life and freedom was always on the line. So even at the lowest level, I was on my edge, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. once those two are gone, yeah, what do you have left? Right. Right, so I was on the edge. So becoming a successful entrepreneur, becoming a, a man that walks in his God body, becoming a man that operates on a high frequency. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the low level frequency of life and death out of the equation, and then now put it on a high level, right? So now the life of debt may not be prison or like a literal casket, but what it is now is, is it's freedom, right? or my family not coming to this next level, right? And so all of us have to be the revolutionaries for our bloodline. Every last one of us. That's a fact. Right, every last one of us have, to, like somebody gotta pick up the torch, right? And so for me, that's it. So a revolutionary is somebody who goes against the system because they feel like there's another law that should be in place that benefits them, right? So I truly know, not believe, I know in the depths of my heart that there's a, a law that I must put in place for my family. Mm, a law. A law. It's not a belief. It's a law. A principle that has to be put in place for my family. Because if not, they then will only see the life and debt that I saw at the low level. Right? So I got to be the one that say, okay, let's bring it up. And then what I do now is, okay, what does that look like? Well, since I know that I am the alpha, the number one, the pioneer, I know I'm a revolutionary. I always got to go far. Mm -hmm. I always got to be on the edge. Why? Because the masters, slave masters, the, 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 the bounty hunters, 
they always after me. Mm-hmm. They always want to bring me back to the plantation. What is that plantation? Well, it's a low level frequency. It's a frequency. Well, if I allow, if I give them permission to feed me, I give them the, uh, permission to starve me. And if you starve me, you starve my family. That's a fact. Right? Freedom is a quiet taste. So I got to always push that level, that edge. I owe it because the minute I get comfortable, the minute they come and get me. And if I go down, the whole ship go down. That's a fact. Right? The whole ship go down. So because I've exposed my family, because I've exposed the people around me to something different, now they have adapted that taste. Mm-hmm. But they may not have the blueprint yet to go get it. So Trap got to do it. Right? They got to see me in motion. Right? So a lot of times we hear people say like, I'm talking to my family all the time, but they don't want to listen to me. Okay, what have you showed them? Mm-hmm. Right? What have you showed them? How have you showed them that what you're teaching them going to better their life? How have you showed them? Has it better your life yet? We are people of, remember I talked about this, ego, visualization, and emotion. Mm-hmm. Those are three principles that help people make a decision. Right? Those are primal things that help us make a decision. So, one, Egoism is, what does this do for me? How does it benefit me? Can you show me that? Okay, you can't, cool. Visualization, can you take me to a place that shows me visually that what you've done works or emotionally, can you get that out of me to, to uh, cause an emotion that allows me to take an action, mm. right? And so what I do and what, I, what keeps me to the edge is I keep going search for those three things in everything that I do. So I can search for those three things and then I can bring it back to my people, my family, my friends. Like, here's the three things you need to make a decision. Here they are. This is what freedom looks like. This is what time freedom looks like. This is what economic freedom looks like. You don't have that now. Do this. This is what it gave me. This is what it can give you. But you got to get on that edge. Mm. Right? And so that's like, I'm a constant reminder. I never get comfortable where I'm at. That's key. You know what I'm saying? That's key. You, when you talked about the law, right, creating those laws, I think about great men operate with the laws of the universe. Mm-hmm. That's just the reality. Mm-hmm. From when you go back into the 1910s and 20s, there was a movement of positivism, uh, positivism where people started to operate with the laws of positivity. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Thinking it can be done. Mm-hmm. Things that in your mind can now be produced out. And there was a whole entire movement of men that were gathering information in like secret rooms. Mm. You understand me? Like what today's mentorship men back in the mm. day were getting, they were getting thought counsel, how to think in mm-hmm. different ways. And where certain men were exposed to that information, it transformed their whole game. Mm-hmm. Right? Then they started to think about, because genius was thought about in a different way back then. Mm-hmm. Genius was thought about in the sense of your spirit and your soul connected to source. Mm. And that each person had a genius and an intelligence. That's how intelligence was defined. Mm -hmm. Then you got the computer era and we started to define intelligence based on computational skills. Mm -hmm. You understand me? People be like, yo, you got your wires crossed. Like certain sayings didn't come out until the computer era came out. Mm -hmm. Right. But before that, it was based on your soul and your spirit intelligence. Mm -hmm your power of observation, Mm -hmm. your power to make the right decisions and to be amongst the right people, right? Like in life, you know, when we talk about the laws of intelligence, your ability to be able to make the right decision to go in the right direction. So your ability of choice and decision Mm -hmm. are key factors when we talk about intelligence, Mm -hmm. right? And so when you're trying to guide your family, and this is how you can tell who is the, you know, person that should be guiding their family, who is making the right decisions, who mm-hmm. has the greatest ability to choose. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to a counsel, you go to that person. That person is usually going to be what? The person who has the most money, mm-hmm. most social impact, influence, right? Their life is at the highest level because mm-hmm. they have the greatest ability to make the best decisions throughout time, mm-hmm. right? And we've lost our understanding of the laws of the universe. We know about like, Law of attraction, mm-hmm. right? Every like the secret didn't create the law of attraction. Right. <laughs> it just documented some of right. it. Yeah, like but that existed for eons. Yeah, men and women have understood that for thousands yes. of years. That what I think I can produce. So when I look at every man and woman that are of great caliber on that great level, I can see 
energy vibration frequency. Mm -hmm. I can see the type of energy you're on. If your energy, of course, is matching, you understand me, that vibration, and you're doing it frequently, you will win. Mm -hmm. Because every thought has a frequency. So for the family, family and the law of family was getting everybody to work together in a collective intelligence. You understand me? Can we all operate? And it's not to say that everybody has to even understand it, but everybody has to play their part. Mm -hmm. Right? That's a difference when you look at a Google, you look at an Amazon, you look at Apple, you look at these great companies, Everybody don't know the systems from top up to top down, but if you play your role, then we are able to utilize the collective intelligence, right, of our community, of our family, of our structure, and everybody is going towards that role of cohesion. wealth and success and power, domination, force, rulership, whatever it may be. So now we're at this point of what decisions are you making for the family and what direction are you taking the family? You understand me? And or if you don't have a family, where are you taking yourself? Mm -hmm. Because most men and women don't have a roadmap to their destination, mm -hmm. right? And even if you don't, you still will have to have the ability of observation to be able to look around and have deference to say, okay, well, hmm, this don't look like the right direction. This looks like the right direction because of this, mm -hmm. right? So therefore, I'm gonna make this decision to go this way. So now you got it by intuitive intelligence. Mm. Right. And so these are all of these different things when it comes to the human mind and the way the human mind works and the stripping and looking at the blueprint of great humans and great beings that learn how to operate within the flow. You understand me? And this will work throughout eons forever, no matter how. Because, look, we have smart tools, but when we look at the statistics of productivity, they still low. Mm -hmm. Right. Like. The technology, the increase in technology did not come with an increase of statistical productivity. Mm -hmm. So our levels of efficiency haven't increased. So that means that there's something within the human intelligence that's missing in this era. Mm -hmm. Right? Like we have the smartest devices, we have the greatest phones and technology and access and information at our fingertips, but our mind does not know how to make decisions and how to utilize it. Mm -hmm. So I want to give people a uh, uh, you, uh, you keep you put that word framework in my framework. Mind. Yeah, framework. <laughs> you feel me? Of when I when I look at trap, there's I'm trying to figure out the root of trap. Mm -hmm. You understand me? What laws did he operate on? Mm -hmm. Right? Is, you know uh, the law of confidence. Mm -hmm. Surely you operate within that all the time. Mm -hmm. You have confidence in yourself. It will reflect in how other people perceive you, and they will be forced to okay. mirror. Yeah. They don't have no choice. You cannot mm -hmm. perceive me any way other than I perceive myself wholeheartedly than what is harder than my belief or faith, mm -hmm. right? So I want to know what laws do trap live by? Mm. Mm. So one of them um, is for sure that I operate in extreme confidence, mm. like extreme. So just give an idea. Um, and, and that's because I've been tried and tested. Right, so if you look at a plant, oh, well, this is a great analogy, right? Some people don't know if they get buried or if they're being planted, mm. right? And so they look the same. Mm. They look similar. He owes it for. They look similar, right? The difference is one is the end of life, but one is the beginning, mm. right? And so in my mind, adversity is me getting planted. It's never me getting overwhelmed. It's never me getting buried. It's, oh, I'm being planted. Yeah. I just got to nurture myself now. That's the only thing is I'm self-nurturing. Right? Like, I don't need a lot of the outside people. Like, they say, like, the love. Like, I don't need the words of affirmation because I can nurture. I'm, I'm going to get it from here because I'm going to use what I've been through as what nurtures me. Mm. Right? Okay, bet, trap. This, this, this is uh, a little painful. Right, this is uh, 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 taking you out your comfort. This is uncomfortable. Past positive reflection. Right, but check it. Remember when we was homeless? Right, remember when we slept in that mattress, in the corner, in the trap house for real, before it was caught in a trap house, it was just a crack house. Yeah. Remember we slept in that? Like remember they had eight fiends around you smoking crack and you still was like, bet I'm good? Boom, this ain't nothing compared to that. Mm. Oh, bet I did that. Okay, trap, remember when when we did the 10-year bid, like, and remember, like, nobody wrote you letters. 
right? Remember that, how that felt? Bet, right? Remember when you got the 10 years for a timber door robbery? No bodies in the courthouse. Remember how that felt? Bet, this ain't got nothing compared to that, right? Like, remember, Trap, like, you've never met your dad before, but yet you're a great father. Remember that. Like, this ain't got nothing compared to that, right? Okay, Trap, like, remember when, like, you were almost kidnapped me, almost had you in the trunk of the car, but, like, you knew if you got in the trunk of the car, that was it for you, and you got out of that situation, right? So, so this has nothing, or that got, I'm good. Bet, I can get over this. Right, so that law of confidence, it exudes me because I feel like there's nothing life can throw at me that is not meant for me to overcome. So every time life hits me with all these different things, oh, I'm being planted. Mm. I ain't being buried. Mm. I'm being planted. Okay, bet. And I have the tools to self-nurture and self-fertilize. Right, so that's like, that's that's big. That Like, that's kind of like at my core, right? That law of confidence. And then the law of belief. Like, I truly believe in my ability to overcome. Mm. That's one of the most powerful. You know what I'm saying? Like, the law of belief is, and I truly believe in my mind and in my spirit that there's nothing that I cannot do. Mm. Right? So now you mix the confidence with the belief and like, yo, okay, now I have the ability. And the next one is that I am an infinitely intelligent being. Right, my intelligence is at another level. Mm. And it doesn't mean that there isn't knowledge that I don't want to learn, but I know that I have the intelligence to get through it all because I'm God. Mm. Like if I look at my track record of the people I come from, like they we known for creating the best things. We known for operating on high frequency. I come from that. Right. I don't got to look far. So the confidence, the belief, the intelligence, yo, like, those are my trifectas. That's, that's cold. Like, that's cold. my, and that's, like, this, this what I live on. Because belief in self is the highest level of intelligence. Before I can go believe in anything else. Before I can believe in anything else. Before I can believe in anybody else's ideas, I got to first say, I believe in trap. And what you broke down about, <coughs> I call it past positive reflection, right? Your ability to be able to go in your past and find confidence for your present. You understand me? Like like, like you talked about being able to synthesize information and reflect on it. Like, yo, I've been through a much harder time than this. Yes. Which means that you can grab confidence from the past and yeah. use it in the present. Yeah. You understand me? And I've always done that my whole life. Like, I, I use something that I went through to let me know I can go through this next thing. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. me? And so... That's a very powerful tool, the law of confidence, the law of belief. And the law of belief is very powerful because it's the programming and the hardening of self, mm -hmm. right? Like, so you got your conscious, mm -hmm. your super conscious, and your subconscious. Mm -hmm. Your conscious is knocking at the door to try to get beliefs into your subconscious, mm -hmm. right? Like, you may start with an idea that you can do something. Depending on where your subconscious is and where you vibrate, you may or may not believe yourself at that moment. Mm -hmm. Right? And so it's like keys. You can have the greatest show ever, right? Mm -hmm. So a person might have to consistently affirm to themselves that that's possible. Mm -hmm. But if you utilize in the past, no, I've done something like this similar, either it was the exact type of situation, or it was of a similar situation that was even more dangerous, required more elements that were out of my control and I still survived which let me know who I am and I can take that same energy and apply it here, mm -hmm. right? And so I think about that in many different regards because it's a superpower, yes. right? Confidence is the ability to hold on to truth. Mm -hmm. You understand me? I like that. If, if I've trained, the truth is I'm ready. You understand me? Because I'm gonna think about, yo, the reason I'm, I'm going into this fight so confident, I've been training. And the reason mm -hmm. I go into this conversation confident because I've been studying, mm -hmm. right? So confidence is that ability to hold on to truth, not falsehood. Mm -hmm. That's a completely different thing. Mm -hmm. So operating in the laws of belief where you're taking thoughts and you're knocking them into that subconscious by consistency, mm -hmm. right? Because you have to live it in order to become it, mm -hmm. right? And once you live it, now it's in your subconscious and your subconscious feeds that to your superconscious where you tap it into that super mm -hmm. intelligence. And that's where you have the ability to do abundance. Mm -hmm. I mean, any and everything mm -hmm. you want to be, 
to do can be done. Mm -hmm. So every dollar you have now was a dollar that you made in your mind first, mm -hmm. right? Like your mind is the first bank. Every transaction goes through here. Before it happened, I seen it. Before it happened, I thought it. There are certain thoughts that you can put out there. It made me worth a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Low frequency thoughts. Mm -hmm. If right now, if you think about, yo, I want a hundred, you can get that in. You might ask somebody, you can go to your own bank. Mm -hmm. You you good for a hundred, I'll give you a hundred. That's nothing, mm -hmm. right? Now I want a million. Okay, well, I got to use a different system and set of thoughts. Now you got to operate with different laws. You got to pull in the law of confidence for that million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got to pull in the law of belief for that mm -hmm. million, right? But you also get to utilize, right, the law of past positive reflection by thinking, I've done it before, I can do it again, mm -hmm. right? So now you already had a framework in your head to go right back off that system and operate at that level. Now that super conscious tells you that, all right, Let's stretch us. Let's see how far we can really go with mm -hmm. this, right? You say you want to do something. I believe you. You have to relax yourself into a state to where you're not questioning yourself. And mm -hmm. that's what confidence comes in because if we get to the point where we question ourselves, it blocks us from real belief. Let me say something right quick. Also, like I always say this to myself, what deposits am I putting in my bank? Talk to me. Like, I'm always about, like, I self-affirm. Like, my team tells me all the time, like, I've met, met somebody who's more confident and has the ability to make something that you think of today come into fruition another day. I say, because I always put the mental deposits in my bank, right? And if you don't put mm -hmm. the mental deposits in your bank when it's time to go get it out, if you don't have nothing there, you can't get nothing out of it. That's a fact. Right? So it, it's going to say insufficient funds. Right, so if you put, if I'm daily putting, like, bro, you the shit, right? Like, like trap, like you, you did yeah. that shit. Go do that. You could do that shit again. Yep, I'm about to go read this book in a day. Yep, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna take the day. I'm gonna read. Uh, I bet I got it. Right, I'm gonna run this extra mile. I'm gonna do one more. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna do the extra rep. I'm gonna do one more. Right, what that did is I'm every I'm putting a mental deposit in my head, in my brain. So now when it, when I get in that adverse situation or when I come with the, oh, how can I make a million in a day? Is this possible? I'm going to not, oh, it's time for me to make a, a withdrawal. Okay, go make a withdrawal from that from that mental bank. Oh, but my mind don't say insufficient funds. Mm. I got enough. Mm. I bet. Right? So that's where that abundance come from. Abundance. That's the law of you abundance. Feel me? That's where abundance come from. I done made enough mental deposits to what when it's time for me to make a withdrawal, I got enough. Yeah. That's I that's how I taught my younger brothers about money one day. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Is that you never give at balance. Otherwise, at balance you teeter on the path of negative and positive. Mm -hmm. You understand me? If your if your bank account is at zero, is at balance. Yep. You get one dollar, you in negative. Yep. You understand me? <laughs> so I'm not giving I was I remember when we was traveling in 2017, the shift is and we was going back to back, place to place. Right. Detroit, Chicago, right. everywhere. I remember that. Man. I remember that. And it got to a point, we, we went to an island. We went to a St. Joseph, not St. Joseph, St. John's, one of them islands. And once we got to the island, it was the first time we was, all of us was able to just pause for a second, put our feet in the sand. Right. You know, in the sand, you get that piezoelectric activity. Mm -hmm. So it balances out your body. And I was able to come back to my state of balance you understand me? And I'm like, I don't ever want to get to that place again where I feel drained. Mm. Because I gave everybody everything. Talk about that. But it wasn't enough to reciprocate the energy to balance me out. Mm -hmm. And revolutionaries and people that are activists in the streets, they often think that they're better when they drain. Mm. I, if I give everything, that makes me morally better. So a lot of times they keep themselves bankrupt because mm -hmm. nobody can nobody can say you're doing this for the money, mm -hmm. right? And so it's a mental deficiency that you have when you do that because you're not operating at the highest level of how you actually could be more efficient if you had the capital for mm -hmm. the movement. Mm -hmm. So I said, damn, I got to create a new law for this because every time I find an issue, I create a new law to live by. I got to have some type of- I like principle. that. So I said, we're going to operate with the law of abundance. I don't want balance. No because problem. you can't deviate from a principle. Mm -mm. No, nah, that's something I live by and mm -hmm. it keeps me through all situations. So my law of abundance was if I only got 100, you understand me? I can't, if I got 100, I can't get 50. Mm. I can't get 60. Mm -hmm. I can't get 70. I can't get 80. I can't get 90. I can only give maybe one or 10. 
if mm-hmm. I got a hundred. Mm-hmm. But for real life, I'm probably gonna give you know ten. That'd be mm-hmm. my max. I'm not gonna go beyond that. I need to have abundance. That's mm-hmm. what wealth is—an abundance of assets mm. that greatly outweigh your liabilities. Mm. You understand me? I like I, it. I don't want them to have. I got five assets, five liabilities. No, that's balance. You balance. You you ain't got shit. You ain't got shit. <laughs> Well, I need an abundance. Oh, so the, in the mental aspect as well, when I'm giving to the people, I have to have an abundance of energy. Mm-hmm. So when I leave, I have enough for myself, mm-hmm. right? So when I got a thousand, right? Now I can give out a hundred. I can give out one through a hundred happily, no problem. Yeah. You understand me? And if I do happen to go over a hundred, I'm still good because I'm never gonna touch 30, 40, 50. Yeah. Cause now we going, we going to emergency yep. reserves. So when you operate with that law of abundance, I need more confidence than this activity requires. Mm -hmm. You understand me? I need more consciousness than the conversation requires. Mm -hmm. I need more systems than the actual frequency that I'm trying to reach, whatever I'm trying to hit. Mm -hmm. I need more than what it requires. Mm -hmm. So the same thing when you're projecting a thought to manifest, you don't never go at the goal. You go above the goal. So even if you don't hit the goal, you still land as something that's preferable for you. Mm -hmm. You understand Mm -hmm. me? And so that's why I wanted to give people frameworks on laws of the universe because they can start utilizing these principles to say that, damn, this will actually work in this particular situation. Mm -hmm. I want to go on something different, though. Let's talk about it. The law of move. Every time I see you, you're in a good mood. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. And mood determines your day. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Your life. It's introspective and a measurement mm-hmm. of where the man is or isn't. And if you can change the mood, you change the outcome of things that happen within mm-hmm. the force of your day. And I think you particularly don't just operate within a good mood. You operate with the law of excitement. Yeah. Where I've seen people who they don't eat. If they don't, even if they don't eat good, if they don't get no exercise in, they got heavy energy yeah. all the time. Yeah. And I know you do both. Yeah. But I'm saying this, people, when you operate with the law of excitement, you're pulling energy out the molecules of the atmosphere. Right. And you operating off that. That's right. your gas. Right. So what keeps you excited? Like <laughs> when it's when good. you talk the trap, it's good. that energy, like, it's nah, I'm here with it. It's good. And it's transferable into the next person. Yeah. So they move this infectious. Yeah. Man, I, it's amazing because I'm, I'm gonna go back to this, man. I'm so happy to be where I'm at in my mm. life, right? So for the longest, I operated out of survival, mm. right? And when you operate out of survival, every move is of vital importance. Yes, sir. Every move, right? But if you look at a lion, there's days where the lion's just chilling. Yeah. But he's happy to be a lion. Yeah. Because he know the safari Jeez. is abundant. Yeah. He know the yeah. day he feel like, yo, let me get up, man. Yeah. Let me go get something. I feel oh, oh. Yeah, I'm man. Y'all know I'm up. Oh. Yeah. I'm up. Everybody gonna look around. The birds gonna follow the tree today. He's he up. He's <laughs> ready. Because the lion understands, yo, like, it's good to be a goddamn lion. Yeah. The I'm gazelle, the, the gazelle, every day wakes up in fear, knowing, is this gonna be my last day? That's a fact. You feel me? The zebra, is this gonna be my last day? That's a fact. You feel me? The lion, like, yo, like, what are we doing today? Right? And so for me, I look at myself in that. Like, I said this on my grandma the other day, like, you gotta, you gotta kill the gazelle and give birth to the lion. Mm, that's key, right? You gotta kill the gazelle because at some point we all may be in survival mode, mm-hmm. right? We come like every day we get up, we run, we running, we we trying to get up out of something, we trying to escape something, right? But you gotta kill that, and I, for me, I've been able to kill that, mm. slaughter it, hang it up by the tree, let it drip dry, good. Mm-hmm. And when I say that, that means there's, that's a version of myself that I killed, mm. right? And then I gave birth to this lion who now sees the world as an abundant place, full of opportunity, full of people, full of obstacles as well. Because I'm not just saying that the world is just all good. I know that for every good, 
there's an obstacle that I gotta overcome Absolutely. to become great. Right? So so we look at the world sometimes as we have this idea where I got the idea, this is greatness, it goes from here to there. And then when we get hit in the face with the adversity, it breaks us because we in our mind didn't account for something going wrong. Not that it's supposed to deter you, but I say that opportun- um, obstacles present opportunities to overcome. Mm. Right? So I'm like, I'm ready for the obstacle. Yeah. I'm a, like, I won't meet the obstacle. I wanted to come head on because if I look at my track record, I can overcome. So every day I get up, King, like, I'm smiling because mm. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. Bet. It's an opportunity for me to go be great. Right? And so when I look at the potential in the world, if I can look at, if I can look at a billionaire and, and I realize that when he wake up, or she wake up, we wake up to the same clock. Mm-hmm. We wake up to the same sun. That's a fact. Right? We breathe in the same air. Mm-hmm. Right? We got the same material for clothes. We got the same substances for food. So what make them different? Right? The only thing that makes them different is their ability in their mind to go get whatever it is they want. Right. Their ability to see abundance. So if they see abundance and I see scarcity, then they're going to get way further than me. That's a fact. So I got to make the adjustment to abundance. That's a fact. And so for me, the reason why I always got good energy, the always the reason why I know I'm smiling, the always I feel great because I'm excited to be in this position, but also because I'm excited for what's to come. Mm. So if you bring somebody down a dead end road and the sign says dead end or no, no outlet, then you don't got nothing to look forward to. You know that once you get here, there's a dead end, done deal. You got to turn around and go through the same BS you went through. Yeah. But if you on a thing and it says destination a thousand miles away, yo, you like, yo, I got time. Yeah. I got space. Yeah. I'm going to hit it hard one time. I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to cruise. You got time to go through progression. That's exciting. But if you see that thing say dead end, you don't got nothing to look forward to. So the reason why most of us in the hood of, of people who operate on low frequencies is because every day you get up, you ain't got nothing to look forward to. Mm. So if you ain't got nothing you to look it. forward to, you, you don't got nothing to be excited about. You know what, bro? You just hit it on the head. Because excitement correlates with vision. Bingo. You understand me that? And this goes into, you know, neuroscience and neural marketing. Peace family, 19 Keys tapping in. And this episode is brought to you by Goldwater. Now, sleep is probably the one most important thing that a human being can do. I know people used to tell you, come on now, entrepreneurs don't sleep and things of that nature. Don't listen to that, that's complete bull crap. You need your rest, right? Now, the importance is that the universe has, or nature itself has aligned the body, right, with a circadian rhythm. At 10 o'clock, we naturally are supposed to stop eating and our body starts to secrete a fluid, making us tired, right? Known as melatonin. Those who have heard of this understand this. We often disrupt that process because we have uh, artificial lights, blue lights within the day. And by the time we go to sleep, we never get into that deep, deep beta delta wave sleep right now this is not good you want to get into that deep REM sleep because at night what happens while you are sleeping your body is resting and regenerating processing all the information from the day your cells are going there healing your body is digesting the food clearing out your colons and the rest of your body so when you wake up you're clear and you're operating at optimum function now one of the issues in society today is a lot of people don't dream when they do dream they don't dream in color right or when they do dream they don't have a lucid dream and a lucid dream is when a dreamer realize they're dreaming that means that you have power over your subconscious faculties the same way you have power in a lucid dream when you can control everything in your reality is the same way you can have power in a lucid woke state but the lucid dream allows you to be able to figure out complex ideas and things that's going on in your own life and take control over it Right, but everybody doesn't even know how to operate in that standard of reality that every human being has the possession to be able to tap inward to. We have great testimonials when it comes to gold waters that our customers and our clients are always coming back and say, yo, I had my first deep dream in a long time. I've had great sleep. 
So sometimes I would take gold water right before I go to sleep. I also take it when I wake up in the rising. So it gives me that energy. It gets me started. I take it on an empty stomach 30 seconds before I eat anything in my stomach. And I take it at night. So it helps me secrete that melatonin, that electrify my brain, tapping into that third eye, decalcifying my pineal gland. So by the time I wake up, I am abundant. I am refreshed. I am ready to go, as all human beings should. Listen, I don't know what you're doing right now, but make sure you get a great night's sleep so you can wake up refreshed and then do it on the go and see if you're more in that electrical mode. Tap in. Come on, we talked about this <laughs> because it's about programming images into the mind, mm -hmm. right? Like the imagination is built off images. Mm -hmm. You understand me now? For me, I can only be excited. I think about this like, you know, remember going on a field trip when you're younger, you could barely sleep because you know you're about to wake up and Facts. do something exciting. Facts. Facts. So you got an abundance of energy. Facts. Right? You barely get tired. Your circadian rhythm ain't even kicking in. Like, no, I'm up. Up. And you still wake up, even though you went to sleep late, you wake up with more energy. You're still excited. <laughs> so it's the same thing in life. If you do not have a vision, what does your vision do when it happens in the mind? it starts to vibrate a frequency mm -hmm. of high excitement. There's a spike. So this is your regular activity. You got a vision of something. You know, you may think about some money. You may think about a woman. You may think about a place. There's a vision. Boom. The same activity that happens in the brain and when you're thinking of that vision is the same thing that's going to happen when you're living it out. Mm -hmm. So by the time it happens, it should feel like deja vu. Mm -hmm. You understand me? When you have a mm -hmm. real cemented planted mm -hmm. vision in your head. Mm -hmm. So now every single thought and idea is going to be moving you to live out that frequency and that vibration. Yeah. So by the time you get there, like, man, I've been here. Yeah. So you have to be there before you arrive. That's what the vision do. It gives you the energy necessary in order to accomplish the production of that vision. Mm -hmm. You understand? Understand me, and that's probably one of the most powerful tools that I utilize because I know for a fact if I don't have a vision for it, I talked about this last one, last movie with uh Blue Pill mm -hmm. is that I think in images. Mm -hmm. So when I explain, I have to explain it in images. When I talk about everything, has to be explained and sought out in images. That's the way I operate. So if I don't have an image for it, then I know I don't have a way to get there, mm -hmm. right? So. For me, the vision is the most important. That's why I talk about, like, imagine if everywhere we went, there was billboards that said the black dollar is circulating 15 times more in our communities. Mm -hmm. Black family marriages are up by 15%. You understand me? Uh, black investments have now just increased by 20%, right? Black crime is down by 30%. All of a sudden, these are visions that mm -hmm. you're putting into the mind to where a person like, oh snap, they getting excited about that. Now you start planting positive images inside the mind of our people, programming them on mm -hmm. different levels. Now the environment is surrounded by where you want them to go. Mm -hmm. So now if I hear that the black dollar is circulating 10 times more, that makes me want to add into that frequency. Well, the black dollar circulate, I need to circulate the black dollar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we on our rise, look mm -hmm. like we on our way up there. Mm -hmm. But what do we have circulate? We have the opposite frequency. Black dollar don't circulate nowhere. Mm -hmm. Black marriage is down, black family is down, black men and women against each other. Only negative frequency images are supplanted into the minds of our people because we have the most powerful minds. If you can get specifically, like if you can get the black woman to think that she will give birth to anything you put in her mind. Mm -hmm. You understand me? She has such an intelligent womb mind, she produces that. Same thing with the black man. Mm -hmm. We produce our most negative images and we never break focus from that production mm -hmm. because they keep us distracted from the mind of God to produce a better reality. Come on. So for me, I'm always trying to speak in visions because I know if I can give you the vision, that's more powerful than the knowledge. Mm -hmm. The vision is more powerful than the knowledge. I like that. If I can put it as stories last way longer than information, mm -hmm. Right? That's what we remember the most out of religion, out of spirituality, is the stories. Mm -hmm. Because we can make them our own, we can see them, we can feel mm -hmm. them, we can mentally touch them, we can be there. It allows us to travel in time or forward in time, back in time, forward. So it's the vision of our people. So people always ask, well, what is the collective vision then? So you have to have great leaders come throughout time and they give you a templated vision. This is where we headed. This is where we've been. This is what we need to do. Now, the people get that same vision. Now they're thinking from a collective intelligent standpoint. Mm -hmm. They have a thought form in their head and they have rituals and principles and orders and rules and rights that they act out in order for that to be brought out into reality. You cannot predict something 
unless you have factors and people in place to make that prediction happen. Mm -hmm. So by the prophets telling the people, yo, this is what's about to happen, the people then start now become embedded with the vision and then they produce that into reality because mm -hmm. we are just organisms of reaction. Mm -hmm. So on a level of branding, right? Because you are a person I see that has a powerful brand. Mm. A lot of people don't have good brands. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You understand thanks. me? Everybody ain't got a good brand. Like, it's not recognizable. Mm -hmm. If I see that scale or I see an arm and hammer box, I'm yeah. thinking trap. <laughs> you understand me? Like, arm and hammer no longer owns right. baking soda. Right. Trap does. Right. Right. But it's powerful because it's like the way I use the sun, moon, and stars. You look at Facts. the sun, moon, and stars, people send me pictures of astrology Facts. and astronomy. Facts. Because now when they look up, Oh, I'm thinking key. Fact. Same thing when you find in commonly used things and then you imbue the symbolism of your brand. Mm -hmm. Now you're connected with that everywhere mm -hmm. it goes, right? That's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And I want us to be able to have the power to be able to brand better because, and the backstory of that is that brand has to be represented by a family, mm -hmm. right? Because if we don't need everybody, but let's say if out of 45 million black people, if we had... 1,000 powerful families. Mm -hmm. That'd be enough mm -hmm. to rule and guide the culture in the right direction, right? Because I, I want people to replace their idea of intelligence with being able to make the right decisions, mm -hmm. be around the right people, right? And to having the right, great ability to choose. So you don't have to think about yourself as, yo, I didn't pass the IQ test, mm -hmm. right? Which is synthesizing information to choose between A, B, C, D, or E. No, what we trying to tell you is that what I see in Trap, when he calls himself a genius and he knows his intelligence is because he know who he is and his soul vibrates in connection with his purpose. Mm -hmm. When your heart, mind, and gut is all aligned, you can't do anything. If you go get you an astrology test, human design, personality, no matter what you take, they all gonna be like, you're doing exactly what you meant to do. Mm -hmm. That's how you know, oh shit, I was designed by this. Mm -hmm. My stars line, my numbers align, mm -hmm. everything aligns to say, your edge is great speaking, your edge is great thinking, you'll mm -hmm. be good in a leadership position, mm -hmm. you'll be good in investment. All of your charts go aligned to where you are and what you're doing now, right? And if we can get, because, you know, I'm going to say this again, sometimes when we grow up in environments, especially in the hood, what we look at, let's say, a person that traps, you know, drug dealer, they got the money, right? Growing up in South St. Louis, that's what we've seen. These boys pull up, they mm -hmm. throw money out the window. Mm -hmm. they, you know what I'm saying? The bad they hopping in the whip. Shh, I want that too, right? Same thing, NBA stars, hip hop mm -hmm. entertainers. Damn, let me play sports to get in that position. Let mm -hmm. me rap to get in that position. Unfortunately, sometimes people have visions connected to their weaknesses. Mm. You understand me? They have visions connected to their weaknesses because what they see as their outlet for success is, okay, well, shit, I want to trap, but you're actually not good at selling. Mm -hmm. You understand me? You might not be good at mathematics to be able to put the hustle together. Mm -hmm. You might want to be at the top of this, but you're not good in a management position for leadership, right? You want to be a rapper, but you don't have real musical intelligence. Mm -hmm. You might not have flow and rhythm. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Then you might not understand the business aspect. You might not be aligned with that. Mm -hmm. You might want to be a a, 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 a a sports entertainer. You feel me? But you're not athletic like that. But that's your vision. But it's connected to your weaknesses. So what I've been thinking about is optimizing human design to get people to understand where their strengths are and then build a life around their strengths. Mm. Because you're going to be 100% more successful and more powerful building a life around your strengths. No, I love that. So <laughs> to be successful in the street, you had to be a good seller. Absolutely. But you also had to be a good investor. Mm. Talk to him. And then you had to be a good business person. But you also had to be a great speaker. Like, I, in my heart of hearts, the reason why I can thrive what I am now is because I've given birth to another version of me that still has the identity and characteristic, characteristic trait of what I was in the street, mm. right? Like I didn't change my formula, right? I changed the outside, right? I changed the outer appearance. 
I changed the product. The product, but I used the the DNA. Right. Right. So again, I wasn't like a drug lord or nothing like that. <laughs> Never gonna say that. Yeah. But I got to it. But that takes a certain level one of hustle. First, that takes a level of risk. Yes. Right. Let's start right there. Like let's start. We look at what that took. Right. So that took a, a level of risk. Right. Every day, debt, prison, losing my product. My, my people stole from me all the time. Right. My aunt used to steal from me. People, you know, you stash something some way that come with the game. Yeah, so being dangerous. able you feel me? So that risk and being able to take a loss and keep going. Right. So as an investor and as an entrepreneur, the first thing they tell you to do is risk aversion. Mm -hmm. Understand the risk. And will you be able to keep going? Know how much risk tolerance you can. Right. That's two. The, the the number one thing I should have said was understanding who I was as a hustler. Like, what am I good at? Right? So I tried to sell a couple other things like, ah, that ain't my thing. Right? But I knew what my lane was. So as an investor and as an entrepreneur, as a businessman, I know what my identity is. Right? What that is. What is my makeup? Right? Uh, product. Right? I brand in that product. Right? So now I can wear my Wall Street Trapper product branded proudly mm. because now this represents me. Mm -hmm. This represents my movement. This represents my intelligence. This represents my philosophy. Mm. Right? This ain't just a skill in the trap yeah. house. That, this got certified. That's, that's brilliant. Yeah. Too, you know what I'm saying? Like, I embody, thank you, King. Like, I embody who I am inside of this logo. This wasn't just, no, nah, let me just do it. Nah, like, I embody that. Like, I'm like, all right, so this represented that. So then it says, okay, as a speaker, well, Trap, how can you speak so well? Okay, well, in order to be good at business, you got to know how to talk to people. Communication. Communication, right? You can't say, I want to be a good business person, and you don't want to talk to nobody. That's a fact. You don't want to be good at business. I, I want to be behind the scenes, but you don't want to be good at business, right? So I was good at talking. Before you even go, communication yep. is, I think it's the most underrated skill it on is. planet Earth, especially in business. It is. A person that can communicate their ideas clearly, Yes, man, they go win every yes. single time. Better than sometimes a person that has a better that idea yeah. that can communicate can it communicate. clearly. You understand me? And, and that's probably one of the main things people ask me all the time about my ability to communicate. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I've, I've always had a natural ability, but I still study it. Yeah. You understand me? Because yep. learning to listen is part of your ability to communicate, right? And a lot of people only know how to talk. They don't know how to listen. Facts. And so when you learn how to communicate, sometimes it's about just listening. Mm -hmm. And you can say a little thing to let the person know you was listening. Listen. And that's enough. Because yep. in customer service, it wasn't about me selling everything. It was about me listening to what mm -hmm. they wanted. And then guiding them to make the best decision based on the options that I put forth for them. You let them provide the context. Absolutely. They provide the context. You provide whatever it said thing is they're looking for. Yeah. Right. The, the, so whatever that is. And so and that's what we miss. So people will you, you can't communicate. So you can't sell. You can't you can't become wealthy because you can't visualize. You can't help people create the vision. I think in being successful at anything, you have to be able to create a vision. Mm -hmm. It goes back to that, right? So we talked about we talked about neuroscience. We talked about neuromarketing. I meant to say we talked about neuromarketing. Those are three of the things inside of that, right? Egoism, visualization, communication, absolutely, and then emotion, absolutely, right? Knowing those four pillars, look, those are four pillars that you can stand on, right? So it's understanding how do I transfer. So I always use, I'm using this term now. Framework is one, and anchor is another, mm. right? So people are anchored to mediocrity, right? Right there, they're anchored to it. And so for me, um, so I go to therapy right now, right? So I go to therapy because my therapist is actually a performance coach and a therapist, right? And so for me, I say, okay, like, in order for me to operate, like, so me and you talking you like trap, like you operate at a high frequency. And, and you can tell that because you operate at a high frequency, right? So we know when frequency match and we know the conversation. But here's the thing, I don't think he's wants to stay where he's at. And I, in fact, I can, I will put my head on a chopping block that says every day Keys is working on getting to the next level, right? And so for me, I realized, okay, I see my next level, but how do I get there? 
And so I realized that a part of me was still anchored to a little version of me. Right? Mm. And so, yeah. Mm. So part Talk of about me, that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So part of me was still anchored to the, the the street version of me. Right? Like I had a hard time letting that go. But what I had to what, what we were on, on survival's remorse? That's all the time. Yeah. All the time. Because I, I have that too. All the time. Growing up in St. Louis and Oakland. All the time. Especially when you don't have enough of your people from that same environment that's successful. 100 percent That's what it's so that was the part that was angry the most. Was okay, I became this, but I know so many that lost their life, that got locked up, or who just can't see a way out. Mm. How do I get there? Right? Like, and it started making me feel a certain way that I'm like, damn. So what I had, to, what, what we talked about was, me and my therapist, we talked about something that was amazing. He said, this is what I want you to do, man. He said, trap is the CEO. The old free is just what she needed to survive. Mm. But you cannot keep him in a basement. Mm. You cannot chain him down. No suppression. And leave him. That makes him stronger mm. because he operates in darkness. That's where he thrives at. So when he gets the opportunity to break free, he calls his habits. That's hold on, you gotta stop there for a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like my, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what we talking about? We talking about your shadow self. Yes, you understand me. And this is something that is not widely enough understood, specifically in the mental health aspects. Mm -hmm. because one thing about, I'll say about therapy, a mental health conversation, is it doesn't add in the spirituality enough. Mm. Because black people specifically, we operate on the spectrum Spirit, of spirituality. Yep. That's a fact. This is how we define ourselves, That's how we a fact. feel ourselves. We walk into rooms, we checking the vibe, yep. we checking the feeling. Everything about us, we we are measuring it at a spiritual True. level. Yep. When we see something wrong with somebody, what's wrong with that you feel? Yep. Yeah, we're not thinking it from the mental. It's about yeah. that boy spirit. That boy energy. Oh, and yeah. the spiritual is going to then infect the mental. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And then it can go affect the physical. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you be wrong on all these levels. But when you talk about that shadow self, you're talking about that part of you mm -hmm. that only you see. Mm -hmm. When the re when you go away from the world and the glitz of the glamour, and you by yourself, yeah. and you have to deal with yourself. Yes. That's the most dangerous part that people don't want to deal with. Yeah. Cause then that's your true self. Yeah. That nobody else may not know nothing about. You know mm -hmm. your habits, you know your yep. weaknesses, you know your, your vices, failures, everything. Your vices. Yes. That's you. Yeah. There's some people that have effectively learned how to pull that shadow self. Like you said, they bring it to the world. Mm -hmm. Cause now it can't be used against that's them. That's it. That's it. That's the so like, think about this. Like this is powerful right here. Watch this. Mold only grows in the dark. Mm. Mold only grows in the dark. Put it in the sunlight, it, it has to die out. Right? Give it fresh air, it has to die out. Mm. Right? Expose it to cleanliness. You never seen a clean house full of mold? Yeah. It don't exist. That's a fact. Right? So for me, it, it was okay. And so we came up with this concept. We said, instead of chaining him down, we're going to bring him to the table. We're going to use him as a resource, but give him no authority. Use him as a resource. Give him no authority. Give him no authority. Here's why. Here's why we use him as a resource. He knows how to get through some shit. He operates out of power. He knows how to be alone. He knows how to thrive in the worst uh, conditions. Yeah, yeah. Right? He's instinctive. Killer mindset. He'll do some things, but what he doesn't have is great judgment. Mm. Doesn't have great judgment. He's a ball of power and chaos all at once. Mm. He gonna kill and then whatever the repercussions is, he with that. Right. So we bring him to the table. We use him as a resource, but not as authority. Mm. Wall Street Trap is the authority. Wall Street Trap is the CEO. Wall Street Trap makes all the decisions. But what's going to happen is Wall Street Trap is going to be put in situations where you're going to need that instinct. And you let him give that. But if you bring him to the table, he feels a part of the equation. Mm. If you leave him out, he feels like he has to be a force. Mm. 
So this is a conversation me and my therapist been having. Yeah, that's powerful. Right? That's, that's the law of alternates, right? Mm. The law of alternates is being able to create different dimensions of yourself. Yes. And like when you talk about alternate egos, mm -hmm. right? It's important to have that because you have a place where you can store yep. different versions of yourself. Yes. There's a concept about the multiverse, right? Mm -hmm. Where you think about for every decision you make, it splinters a path where there's a different dimension or where you actually done that. So let's imagine there's a version of Wall Street Trap that's a UPS worker. There's a version of Wall Street Trap that's the president. Mm -hmm. There's a version of Wall Street Trap that's an Italian chef. Mm -hmm. The power is, is that you have this ability to visualize different versions of yourself and steal skills from them mm -hmm. at any point in time that you want to. That's it. You can utilize that. So this this ability where you can download different versions, and I do this throughout life. I yes. say, okay, like when you talk about, I'm going to do speed reading. I'm going to read this today. I'm thinking about a version of myself who's master at that. Yeah. That's all they do all yeah. day long. Yeah. So now I'm downloading that consciousness into myself, and I'm operating from that version. Cause this version don't do that. Yeah. You understand me? This version on some other chill. He, yeah. He, he prioritized other things yeah. that he find important. Yeah. But in order to do that, you have to operate with the law of nothing. Right. You have to empty yourself of who you are to become what you want to be. You understand me? And so, cause otherwise you have too much already mm -hmm. right on your mind frame mm -hmm. on, you know, your body that's already built. Mm -hmm. No, I am nothing right now. So mm -hmm. I can become everything right now. Think about Neo in the Matrix. Mm. First one. When he was in the Matrix, he went to, I remember they had this scene where he was fighting um, Morpheus. Mm -hmm. He was learning how to fight. And then he was like, yo, I don't know how to do this. Yeah. So they just downloaded it. Yeah. Whatever the, whatever the yeah, technique yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they switched to another technique, they just downloaded another technique. That's what that's reminding me of. Yeah. So what happens is it's, the ability to adapt. That's a fact. Right? The ability to, again, it go, but it goes back to what we talked about in the beginning. So now we're talking to people's subconscious minds because what I'm about to do, it talks about the law of abundance. Mm -hmm. Right? So one of the ways that I've learned to talk to the subconscious mind, and I'm going to get back to what we're talking about, was you leave open in the conversation. Right? You talk about something, you open them up, and then we leave it. And then now when we talk about the law of abundance, we bring it right back to them. And that's the subconscious mind feeding them. So what happens is the law of abundance is there is nothing that I cannot be because the world is full of abundance, mm. right? This is, we live in an infinite world. We're an infinite being with infinite intelligence, right? So that means there's no limitations on me. Right. If there is no limitations on me, then I cannot operate in lack. That's a fact. So if I cannot operate in lack, there is nothing that I cannot have. Mm. There is nothing that I cannot be. There is nothing that I cannot learn. There is nothing and uh, no place I cannot go. Mm. Be who have. I think one of the one of the biggest limiting yeah, tools, uh, this is a high level conversation. One of the biggest limiting tools yeah. that we have is a mirror. Peace family, 19 Keys tapping in with you. Um, I want to tell you why you need to tap into the infinite wealth strategies. Number one, there's a lot of millionaires being brought every single day, right? The job market is devastated. You understand me? Um, you can go to college, but it's better to get you a skill. I've had several six figure days in the market trading, right? Cryptocurrency. And at the time I had little knowledge, right? I've sold an NFT, which was just a digital picture rendering for over $16,000. But why? Because I understood the market and I knew the value of it. I've sold thousands of books, you understand me, on my e-commerce platform, utilizing my strategies that I teach inside the Infinite Wealth Strategy. But I also have a beautiful community of people all around the world assisting, providing information, resources, and links, because I know that it's harder to learn by yourself, but it's better to learn in a community sense. When you join Infinite Wealth Strategies, you too can become a part of a community of people learning together and earning together. Make sure you tap in because it's the education that you need in order to succeed and build wealth. Don't be on the outside. Tap in. Infinite, Infinite Wealth Strategies. I think one of the one of the biggest limiting yeah, tools. Uh, this is a high level conversation. One of the biggest limiting tools yeah. that we have is a mirror. You understand me? Because Ancient people did not see themselves all the time. Mm. They only seen themselves, you know, through other people mm -hmm. for a very long time, unless they, you know, go into a pond, they can look at a full reflection of themselves. Mm -hmm. But there was no mirrors. Mm -hmm. Right now, 
we see ourselves too much in a physical. Mm -hmm. So we are always operating through self-identity. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Instead of what we add to the collective, right? And this is why a lot of people don't act within the laws of service to where they're trying to consistently create value so that they can be seen as valuable, mm. right? A lot of people want to see themselves as valuable, right? Like I am valuable to my, I can dress a certain way. I can talk, mm -hmm. I'm looking in the mirror to see myself before I go in the world because I want to portray an illusion to the world that I believe mm -hmm. is a good one, mm -hmm. right? But the reality of no reflection, imagine you live an entire life where you don't get no reflection. Mm. You don't get to see yourself at all. Mm. So you're never operating from a physical space. Okay. You're, already, you're always operating from a service, a value, principles, how you make people feel, how other people see you, because you're only looking outward. You understand me? Not that you're not looking inward to yourself, like through transcendental meditation or something of that nature, but the over-reflective society that we have we look in the mirror too much. Now, right. look on social media has now advanced the mirror yeah. even worse. Mm -hmm. Because when people, if you go to the chiropractor, they say for, you know, your head leans forward. For every inch that your spine leans forward, it has 10 pounds, the enemy of pressure. Mm -hmm. So it leans mm -hmm. it forward even more. And so most people have spinal issues that don't know. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, if a person was having their head down that much, they were getting knowledge because they were reading mm -hmm. books. Nowadays, a person is going through a feed and a timeline. So the feedback loop is ego all day long. Ego, 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 comparative analysis of looking at other people who are feeding their ego. Mm -hmm. So there's a theory on the internet that 80% of the internet is fake. Mm -hmm. That if go look on the internet today, you realize, bro, it's really nothing new ever on here. Mm -hmm. Most of it is created by bots and algorithms mm -hmm. feeding you an interlooping system of what they need you to see in order to stay on here. Mm -hmm. But where is the real imagination and creativity? Where is the arts and craft? Where is anything refreshing when you open it up like, huh, you're telling me that a billion people on this platform and everybody does the same thing? 2.8. 2.8 billion. So the comparison that they did was they say, go look at anime. Anime would be a true representation of human beings adding in the emotional aspect of creativity and content, illustration, mm -hmm. storytelling, you know, different. It's got some weirdness to it. Like there's so much illustration. There's a philosophy added to it. Mm. Even to this day, human beings don't philosophize anymore. Before we leave that, I just bought a book on understanding philosophy mm. because philosophy is the art of helping us think. Ooh, you, I got that in my notes. I say philosophy is the art of thinking. You feel me? That's what it is. Yeah. And even with me, I've adapted this thing called root cause analysis, mm. right? So root cause analysis is asking yourself five or six questions before you make this decision, mm. right? And I've made it, I've, I've made it part of my framework and in investing, right? So you say like, yo, I want to buy a stock. Why do I want to buy the stock? Well, because people are selling. Why are people selling? Because of this. Mm. What is why 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 is this happening? Well, it's happening because of this. Why is this happening? It's because of this. And what do I need to do? What do I need to see them do before I buy? Mm. Right. So I, so you 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 have deductive reasoning. Yes. And I've added that to the framework, and I teach my people that now. So now you're not just buying it based off emotion. Mm -hmm. You're not just buying it based off what you see other people doing. Right. right? That may be a, a inclination. But now if you don't go through a root cause analysis, right. then there's no, and if you can't come up with a, I need them to do this in order for me to buy it, it's a no buy. Right. So it, even in my life, I'm operating in that way. I've adapted that. Like, okay, we want to do this. Why do we, let's break it down. What are the reasons why and what do we need to see before we make this decision? Mm. Right. And that, and, then, and, and that is helping in so many ways, but I got that from philosophy. Right. Philosophy, like it's, philosophy being the art of thinking is the most powerful. It's just, Indian philosopher, I think his name was Kashyap. Mm -hmm. And not to be confused with Kashyap. Yeah. You understand me? <laughs> <laughs> Kashyap. He was basically he was walking one day and he started to count the grains of sand. Uh, oh, I heard about this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And as he was counting, he basically got to a point, you understand me, where he started to ponder and saying that just like these grains of sand, everything is made up. You understand me? At a smaller level. Right, because it's gonna be impossible for him to sit there and count every single last one. Mm -hmm. But he started to philosophize about the idea of the atom. Before there was a microscope, and you know many men have done it before. 
But before there was a microscope or, or, or the science around, you know, uh, atomic science to be able to look at an atom, mm -hmm. he had a philosophy of it. And I think about the ability to philosophize ideas is tapping into an intuitive intelligence, mm -hmm. right? And it's the art of thinking because you are able to tap into divine intelligence that you may not have any resource, any way to verify based on our new measurements of verification. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. one thing we have to understand is what we verify today to say is what's validity in science is not the way the ancients verified Agreed. validity in science. Agreed. The ancient Egyptians didn't have the telescopes and the microscopes and all of the different ways to verify, but yet they knew what was right, what was true. Mm -hmm. The Dogon people charted the stars. Mm -hmm. They didn't have no way to build a spaceship to go verify that mm -hmm. this star system was up there. Yet, thousands of years ago, they knew this before modern science is ever confirmed. It. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a certain confidence in your ability to tap into intuitive intelligence, right? And philosophize and to find answers that you may not be able to verify by today's mm -hmm. metrics, but the fact you thought of it, imagination is a place for verification, mm -hmm. right? Like the fact that it happens in the mind meaning that it's true. That's a fact. So I want our people, because I feel like if we can get to a place where we're playing in our imagination, we start to create the world within, mm -hmm. right? But we are at a place where we create what we see. So we are only reflective right. beings. So we're stuck by our sight. We can be free by our vision. Ooh, you understand me? That's heavy. So I never wanted to operate from my sight. A person like, how are we going to do that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go get it in your mind. Yeah. Can you think of it? Yeah. If you can think of it, now you got to reverse engineer. Yeah. Right? All right, I've seen myself holding a million. I'm gonna, I might go sit there and meditate with my future self with that money on. Yeah, he got ten million right now. So let me go transcendental and go All ask right. him how he did. How he did it, bro? How you get that money? How you get that confidence? What was your plan? What was your system? By the very act of putting yourself into your future self, your like brain starts to stretch and think. I like that. It forces you to grow outside of the shell of who you are. I like that. Because we have identities that we become. And they become so hardened that we can't do anything beyond what we think of ourselves. That's right. So it's like, I've been doing this since I was a child. This is good. I used to think of, what would my, like I'm 10 years old, 15 years, what would my 29 year old version be doing? What mm -hmm. my 30 year old, 40? Cause I'm like, he only got more money and look better and got a better, he got a great one. He with my family right now. Right, they vibe. You understand me? He with all my assets. That's, that's who I know I need to get a consultation from. Right. So like, in the BWI to sit the students down, we have a transcendental meditation. Let's have a conversation with our future selves. And every single day, you have and, and, and I want you to imagine what they're telling you to do in order to become them. Mm -hmm. And every single day, and I wrote this in my book, like you have to do something that builds to your future self, because every day you don't do it, you're robbing your future That's self. That's a fact. So it's like the knowledge you don't have today is because you stole it from yourself yesterday by not getting it. Mm -hmm. Right? So the money you don't have today, you stole it from yourself a year ago because you ain't put in that action plan. Mm -hmm. The money that people not going to make in this recession is because they did not put an action plan. They stole it from themselves. Mm -hmm. So in 365 days, they get to say, damn, I built this life up based on my habits and my ability to either rob myself or invest in myself. Mm -hmm. So I can become what I think only if I put in the work to do it. So now we at this place, and I want to ask you this question because I asked these brothers at 85 South Show this. Like, I want you to visualize yourself 10 years in the future and to the detail. What is that? You don't have to say everything out loud, but what is that person wearing, right? To imagine, you know, this is the neuroscience, what kind of cologne they got on, the woman on their arms, what the children look like, the place they live in, the type of the network they got in their phone, the money that's in their bank, the different myriads of assets. And sometimes you have to imagine beyond what's currently in resource because the future gonna look different. So you might be waking up in the morning, taking a neuro pill that allow you to have access to 110% of your brain power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you start adding in factors that mm -hmm. you cannot know because you're really trying to make a realistic future. Mm -hmm. So once you do that, I want you to ask yourself some advice like, what is the one thing I'm naive about today mm -hmm. that if I understood, it would change me tomorrow? Mm -hmm. You understand me? And it will fast track 
Mm -hmm. Me becoming you in 10 years to me becoming you in three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Uh, man, I'm glad you asked me that because I often ask myself, what is the billionaire version of me doing? Mm. Like, I always ask myself that. Like, at least once a week, I'll be like, yo, what's the billionaire version of me doing? So I already I already understand from a component, like, first of all, the the the, the 10-year version of me has, a, like, four more beautiful little chocolate babies running around. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. that's a fact. Yeah. Right? With with some beautiful queen we building. But for me, it's, it's, it's taking this trap apparel brand, making that a staple in the culture, mm. right? Like a staple. Like when I say a staple, I'm talking about the same way we wear, where our people wear like the Gucci and the Louis Vuitton, like, because it's not a coincidence that Bernard or not, the guy who owns Louis Vuitton at Hennessy became the world's richest man during the pandemic. Mm. Right, because so, so. you know that's, that's that's not a coincidence. It wasn't a tech company. It wasn't a, a a software company. It was a luxury goods company. During the pandemic, he became the wealthiest man in the world. Right mm. now, he's number four. Why is that? Because his clothing and his drinking and his watches became a staple of our community. Mm. What happened when people didn't have money? They couldn't get it. And when people got stimulus checks, they got free money. The first thing they wanted to go do was symbolize themselves as like they got it, right? So I want, I'm going to make this brand a staple in our community, mm. right? So that's 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 one thing on the list. I supported it day one. You did, for record. You did. I appreciate you know that, me? and I always keep saying that. Got me a I gotta get some crowns, right? Yes, sir. You see, I got the new ones. I need that. This is, this is the. And I need I don't and I'm I'm gonna say this like I don't Everybody want you to get this. I don't want so. you to give me that either. Yes, sir. I need to buy that. I need to purchase that. Yes, sir. I need to plant a seed in that. Yes, sir. Because I know what that's gonna be. Yes, sir. And so the next thing is I'm creating without going too in depth into it, um, talking about healing our people from financial trauma mm. and financial anxiety. Mm. So right now, me and my team, we are coming up with these uh Tests and assessments yeah. for us. Well, we on the same page. I you feel me? Brother, man. Um, and it's because we can teach our people about wealth. Mm -hmm. We can teach our people about investing. But if we don't heal the financial trauma and the financial anxiety, all we did was take them from being poor slaves to rich slaves. That's a fact. We ain't doing that justice. That's a super fact. Right? What happens is we, I truly believe that selling something is nothing is wrong with selling something so you get information like the world that is the callous to everything right anything we've bought anything we have we've bought it from somebody right i don't feel like selling is a bad thing at all but what i do feel is if i'm truly a thought leader if i'm truly in my mind the embodiment of malcolm x and fred hampton these are the two these are the two mm. black men that I love the most. I got them tattooed on my back, right? Underneath Wall Street looks like us now, right? Fred Hampton and, and Malcolm X are my favorite two black men of mm. all time, right? And their goal was to impact, right? And, and revolutionize the philosophy of our people, mm -hmm. right? In our age, in our era right now, we're in the financial revolution but we are not healing that trauma. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, there's a reason why they say if you take all the money in the world, you in America, you broke it down and divided the world equally, in 10 years, the wealthy people will have it back, but be worth more. That's the super fact. It's cr not what only get it back, they'll be worth more because the stat says that for every $1 that a person earns, they spend a dollar and 25 cents. So mm -hmm. for every one $4 you earn, You've one dollar in a hole. That's not good, right? So now you five dollars in a negative, right? So if we don't heal that financial trauma, we're only setting our people up for more financial suicide. Right. And, and I like that because you're going in the right direction uh, of exactly what we need. You know, the, even the ideas of like tests. Like I'm big on tests right now. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because 
the framework that I want to lay out is a series. Ooh, you like that framework, bro? Well, nah. Hey, look. <laughs> hey, it's, it's there. It's there. You feel me? The frame work. It works. You feel it works. me? <laughs> no, but 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 that's what it is. So it's a series of techniques mm -hmm. and mental transformative techniques. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it allows you to go through a serious system of self-analyzation. Mm -hmm. And when you have enough information on yourself, now you have the ability to plan from um, a level of awareness, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of us operate from ignorance. Mm -hmm. We just don't know. Mm -hmm. And if we did know, now we have this power over ourselves, mm -hmm. right? That's the power of observation that it makes you conscious of things. And so when you are conscious of things, you're no longer left to the whims of ignorance that lead you in the wrong direction, mm -hmm. right? So if I can make you consciousness of your personality, your design, your adverse experiences, mm -hmm. you understand me? Um, the way that, what is your intelligence system? What is your level of intelligence? Mm -hmm. Are you a deductive listener? Are you a reasoner? What type of intelligence do you have in the first place? Like once you get all of these systems and you got a map, I don't care if it's astrology, mm -hmm. right? I don't care if it's your numerology. I don't care if it's with Kabbalicism. We taking a look at your name. Mm -hmm. I want you to have a foul on yourself. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And then you operate from that place of knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. And from there, you're no longer, it's not going to be possible for you to operate at a low level. Cause the low level comes from ignorance. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Like, I explained this. I was on Poor Minds, and he's on Poor Minds. Mm -hmm. Shout, Shout out to, to the queens on Poor Minds, man. So, and I, and I put this up before. You take that triangle up, that triangle down, right? Look at the star here. You got arm, leg, leg, arm, head, mm -hmm. right? Star David got another star pointing downward, mm -hmm. right? Because it's pointing towards your lower self, mm -hmm. right? Then you got the star pointing upward. Well, if your consciousness is pointing downward, and most of society is ego, left brain, everything to get you to point towards your lower consciousness, you're operating from that place, mm -hmm. right? From your lower desires, right? You, you gossiping, you taking in junk, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. Higher is logic, reasoning, mathematical, imagination, creativity, Science. curiosity. Yep. That's where you at right here. So if you have this now, this knowledge of self to where even when the, the, the marketers and the branders and all of these people are trying to pull on your ego, but now you're so aware of it that you can see every play. Mm -hmm. You're aware of why that may have worked in the past, but I'm already past that now. Mm -hmm. I know who I am. See, I might have over eight or it's like for a man, it's like when you're a masculine man, you know, sugar is feminine. Yeah. So you may go towards sugar to try to balance you out, but you may need intimacy. You may need nature. You may need meditation. You may need all of these different things to balance you. But once you have that knowledge, now you're operating from mm -hmm. the most intelligent system possible. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, you know, we both educators and it gets hard to educate people who don't know how to learn. Mm -hmm. So being able to teach people about themselves, allow them to learn anything after mm -hmm. that, because then they also make the right decision on what to learn. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we want to learn things, like I said, connected to our weaknesses. Everybody's not going to learn crypto and Web3 and stocks mm -hmm. and you know, setting up a trust and all, all of these different myriad of financial things that we teach them. And it's not that they can't learn them. It's that they're, they're not good at learning them. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Until they learn themselves, number one. So it's like, for you, I know for a fact when it comes to trading and investing, emotional intelligence is the most important. Yes. If you don't have that, then you're going to lose and you're going to be guided by what you feel instead mm -hmm. of what you think. Mm -hmm. So the thinking system is how you operating in the investing and the trading world. Mm -hmm. So getting people to operate on an emotional intelligence system first will require them to have knowledge of how to do that. Then they plug that in and say that, OK, I don't move my emotions with the market. No, I got principles. I have plans mm -hmm. and I execute. And then that's it. So now they're a much more qualified human being to go into these fields that we're teaching them. And you know, us being, you know, high level scientists, we have to go into these fields of study. You're not gonna see too many, even some of our peers, they're not going into this level of thinking because they may just want money, 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 mm -hmm. money, money. They're not thinking impact, 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 mm -hmm. efficiency, effectiveness. How do I really change the minds of these people so they now get to a point where there's an inflection point where we finally reach where it's a system that's working on itself. Mm -hmm. The generation's habits have switched from spending to investing to ignorance to enlightenment. 
because we happy being at 85 percent the mm. blind deaf and dumb how many people are ready to actually go into that high level to where they say i now have control over myself mm -hmm. and any level of slavery makes you a slave so if you don't have control over your mind and will you a slave at so it's people we think of it well i'm not a chattel slave i'm not a prisoner you can be a slave as long as you don't have control of your mind and your will. Mm -hmm. And there's so many things that rob us and take us away mm -hmm. from self-control, power, discipline, focus, and the ability to transmute thoughts. Because a man is measured by his ability to take his thoughts out of his mind and produce his will in reality. Yeah, and, and also being able to use that data of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like we haven't been good at tracking data of ourselves. Mm. Right? Like, we're good at seeing another person's flaws. We're good at, some people are good at clapping from the stand, yeah. but not planning a game. Right? One of the things I've been heavy on myself for is learning the data. Like, learning who I am, which is why therapy came in important yeah. for me, right? Like, I needed to uncover, like, why did, okay, I had to be aware. One of the things I was aware of was this. For, the, for a large part of my life, I was like, when I ain't ever met my daddy, I don't know him, I'm good, mm. right? We got into a situation where, I, maybe 2018, where my mom's called me and she's like, Leon, look, your daddy about to pass away. He wants to see you, right? And in that moment, I said, he got to die like that. Mm. So he don't need to see me. Say I'm, at the time I was 33 years old, 33, 34, something like that. I was like, look, I got a little one. There's nothing I wouldn't do for my little one. So I'm not understanding why I was homeless. I'm not understanding why I went to prison and he wasn't there. I'm not understanding none of these situations. Now he won't see him in his deathbed. Now he wants to get right with himself and leave me with these questions, right? So, so in that moment, it was easy to make that decision, right? I made that decision, again, knowing who the old version of me was, right? The old version of me, power. If I go into that situation, if once he dies, I ain't powerless because I got a bunch of questions that you can't answer, right? Fast forward, I'm talking to my therapist and I said, listen, I now realize that there's a part of me that is mad that I never met him because I have ways about me that I know didn't come from my mom. Mm. And because I, because I never met him, I have this information that I can't do nothing with. And that is a vulnerable space for me, right? That's, that's being conscious of the data that I have about myself. Right. Yep. Not having a father made me a great father, but there were some things that I got from him that I now can never. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and so we're good at looking at everybody else's uh, formula, but we're not good at looking at our own data. Mm -hmm. And so for me to be the best educator and to be the most impactful, I want to do three things. Mm -hmm. I want to look at my data. I want to look at my people's data. And then I will present a solution based on the data. That is an educational formula for me, right? If I can look at my data and say, okay, Trav, this is what, this is what your strengths are. This is what your weaknesses are. This is what you gravitate to. This is what you stay away from. Okay, cool. Now I understand my teaching method. I understand, okay, like you're energetic. You are powerful. Your voice, you are articulate, right? So I understand who I am. Yeah. So now I say, okay, here's my people. Here's my audience. Here's who I want to connect to, right? What's their data, right? And so now I do a series of posts, polls, whatever, so I can learn the people who I want to educate. And so now what I can do is take their data and say, now I create messages to touch them based on the data they've given me, mm -hmm. right? And that's how we become like the most impactful, right? Not doing stuff from what I want to do, but based on the people's needs. Right. 
that that gets me to the idea of value and knowledge versus new knowledge. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, we give a person new knowledge, but it's not valuable to them. Exactly. Right. And so, you know, new knowledge, you could tell me about, I don't know, uh, anything. Yo, I just got me a new car. That's right. new knowledge, but it's <laughs> right. not valuable to them. Right. So the valuable knowledge, like you said, is making sure that you're giving them things that actually impactful to their mm -hmm. lives and applicable to their situations. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as a teacher, it's, it's like once you go high level, you can go over somebody's head. Oh, yeah. And don't get me wrong. It's important to have high level conversations because otherwise you starve the people at the high level, mm -hmm. right? To just focus on the low level. And, but you, then you never give them a goal or where the reach to understand. Because mm -hmm. I've had people say, yo, I watched one episode three times to understand 50% of it, mm -hmm. right? So now go watch it another six times, you'll get 100% mm -hmm. of it. So I'm giving you a benchmark to reach. Mm -hmm. You understand me? But when it comes to, there's something called the curse of knowledge. It's the teacher's inability to teach at the student's level, mm -hmm. right? And they can only teach at their level. Mm -hmm. And so I've always looked at that idea to make sure that I'm not going far beyond where my audience is. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I lose them. You lose them. Being able to intelligence is now we look at it in regard to make difficult things simple. If I can break this down in a manner to where a third grader can understand it, then I can teach it universally to where all people can understand it, mm -hmm. right? So now I'm teaching at the highest level by breaking it down to a simplest level, right? So you you always want to have data loss when you do that because you can't add in all the details, mm -hmm. but you simplify the analogy, the idea, the concept enough to where when you can present that, they can download something new. Now, once they get to a higher level and they understand the nuances, the details, now they can take it from where its root is. Right. And now they have the ability to become like you. Mm -hmm. But as long as I have to, it's like an adult have to eat the food, chew it up, feed it to the baby. Mm -hmm. Right. You're never going to be the adult. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be baby fed. Mm -hmm. Once you have the ability to take the root of it, chew it for yourself and digest it so that you can get the full absorbed nutrient of whatever that information or knowledge is. Now you at that master level. So, and so the importance in that for me is um, with, with my brand and who I present, like even now when I make decisions in my life, the decisions I make, I always say to myself, and this may be good, this may be bad, but how does this represent the brand? Mm. Now that's good. Right? Like how does this, I wanted, to, I wanted to put something up yesterday and my COO was on side of me and she said, that's not a good look for the brand. I, 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 but, but here on edge with that. No, no, no. But I wanted to say something. It, it was, I wanted to say this, and I, I'm gonna say, I can say it on high level conversation. Right. Yeah. I said, uh, I said, this may be harsh, but some, some people are meant to settle. Mm -hmm. I said because success and new thinking requires more than motivation. That, that feels on brand. You feel me? <laughs> that feels on brand. But I think about trap right. because sometimes you hit people with a harsh yeah. settlement of reality. Yeah. And it yeah. resets them like fuck. Yeah. Yeah. We need that. So that's why I was gonna say that I'm on edge with that right. because sometimes once you ask somebody else, you filter in the thoughts you already know yeah. is right. Yeah. And you only asking somebody so that they can pull you away from right, it. right. You understand me? So I like that's that's my thing is being at the edge. Right. And I'm already a lot, so sometimes <laughs> I have to... And, bless, and that was me. In yeah. my mind, I'm like, I know I already be a lot sometimes. Yeah. Like, I know sometimes you look at me like, damn. And so I didn't want to... And, and I know why she said that, because she was like, you always give people hope. And I always have said that when I when my audience sees me, I don't. I want them to say, that's the level I'm coming up to. Like a trap went from here and got here. He didn't tell me, he didn't leave one step out the way to how he got there. Right? He, he always told me the steps. And from, from her mind, from how she looked at it, it was, I'm giving them a step backwards. Right? But I'm always, I like to be harsh. Because what I think what's happened in the world a lot of times is people walk away from harsh truths. Yeah. Right? And so I said, like, yo, like, 
this is harsh, but like the reason why some people are made to settle, it's not that you're made to settle, but settling is where you'll be at in life is because one, you don't want to be competitive. Two, you don't want to believe in yourself. Three, you want to be anchored to the past that kept you there, right? Four, you love to be the victim. And five is going to take more than motivation. Yeah. Right? And like, I'm not, I always say like, I'm not the person to motivate you because all I needed for myself for motivation was to look at where I came from. Yeah. Right? Nothing motivation against nobody that, instruction that, yeah, that. like no, like nothing against nobody, like me and ET are cool. Great motivational speaker, great information, but I'm not the motivator, right? I'm that person who's going to give you the information to take these steps to do one, two, three. I'm going to give you structure. I'm going to give you frameworks. The motivation got to come from you. Yeah. Motivation was only level one. It was, so my framework is motivation, mm -hmm. right? You are telling people what to do. You, you're trying to mm -hmm. imbue and insert energy into them, mm -hmm. right? Inspiration, you're showing them what you do. So they're mm -hmm. inspired by your moves. Mm -hmm. Education, you're teaching them how you actually mm -hmm. did it, mm -hmm. right? And the reason I had this step is because sometimes education is not detailed enough, so instruction. Mm -hmm. I got to give you a step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. I can't just give you the general mm -hmm. information. And then the last step is where we are now in society is automation. Mm -hmm. You understand me? I'm going to set the process up for you mm -hmm. because I know otherwise there's a certain percentage of you that will just be left behind. Mm -hmm. And that's the harsh reality. So I've always said motivation without instruction is dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I created that framework because you can build a business, you can build a funnel, you can build any system you want to out of following that path work. I like it. You understand me? And when you're building something. So if I'm teaching, I'm going to start with the motivation, go to the inspiration, go to the education, go to the instructions. Mm -hmm. And if we have a way to be able to automate this process for you, we're going to do that mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And so motivation had a great place. At first, that's all we needed. Somebody just come talk to us. Mm -hmm. Then we get like, I need to see y'all do that. Yeah. Wait a minute, I can't figure this out. Right. Teach right, me. Right. Right. Matter right. of fact, that wasn't enough. Give me instructions. I need a mentor. Guide me right. through this. Now it's like, man, can y'all automate this? Cause this, right. And we got hella technology. I'm distracted. My right. mind gone. Automate this process, and then I'll get it done. So look at all these companies. They're automating all their processes mm -hmm. because they know that human behavior is becoming more lazier. As technology uh, is becoming more efficient by design, yeah, absolutely, and and that's that will truly be the killer of the culture, mm. because what's what's happening is the technology has made the people lazier, mm. a people that's a fact who are already like sleeping, right? So if you make a if you make a, a drunkard person drunker, right, or give them another drug, drink, they go into a deeper slumber. You know what I'm saying? And so now what that does is now I read a stat literally in a book I was reading that said that by 2024, the Caucasian race will be the minority. Yes. Right? Because of COVID created a uh, baby bust. Right. So now it advanced the speed of, you know, depopulation. De right. And I'm like, okay. And then it, and it, I'm like, okay, I get it. And so then I started looking at the things that are going on. You get it. Right? I'm like, oh, this makes sense. Right? This makes sense. Right? This is why, you know, the education and all these other things are like, like hard headlines. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I'm like, oh, if the deeper the slumber, the more this, they reign supreme. Mm -hmm. Right? And so it goes back to my thing. Like, if you allow them to feed you, give them permission to starve you. That's a fact. Right? And so if we giving people permission to keep us in a slumber, then we can't blame no one but ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's what the tech, the, the technology is amazing. Right? The technology is amazing, but too much technology consumed makes you a dummy. That's a fact. And it's not increasing our aggregate efficiency. It ain't the aptitude, the intelligence, the productivity, the procreation. Right, we are people that love to procreate. Right, we are people who are in depth and in touch with the universe. We are people who are in touch with nature, spirituality. This is our framework as a people. Right, no matter what we went through. When I see my brother with the gold on, when I see my, I know one thing, he operating on high frequency. 
because the gold takes us to another level. People don't even know that. You got that gold on you. Do <laughs> I, listen, I, but I, people focus a lot on nutrition, body wise. You know, I'm gonna feed this particular system of the body. I'm gonna feed that system. Very rarely do people speak about the mind. Very rarely do speak, people speak about the brain. The brain needs the most energy, right? The brain is uh, needed to process. The brain is needed to, you know, compartmentalize. The brain is needed for so many things, you know, but we don't know what brain food looks like, you know? We know that the body's electrical, and what I understand about gold is not only is it super conductive, but it's non-corrosive and it's a noble element. So they say that if I am what I eat, I want to be noble, you know what I'm saying? I want to be of the highest degree, and I also want to focus on mental health, I want to focus on gut health, I want to focus on energy, I want to focus on youth, I want to focus on, uh, you know, accessing uh, pineal activity, hormonal balance, everything the goal represents is what I want to see more of. So what better thing to do but align myself with this particular product and get it out to as many people as I can by singing the praise of gold, which is something that our people have been doing for over 10,000 years. Here's what I yeah. told myself when I came here. I need, I'm not gonna wear all black today. Yeah. I'm gonna wear, I'm not gonna wear red today. I say, I need to wear a color that represents high frequency. Yeah. Because I know who I'm going to talk to. Yeah. This was, I promise this was intentional. This is only my, my second time in life wearing an all like purple. Suit. Right. That is, I like that. You feel me? Purple and gold to, to Milano, black. Yeah. Colors, you feel, you feel me? me? And, and, I, and I, I literally intentionally said that though. I like, I want a color. I'm going to wear one of my colors today that really helps me like bring out, because I know my brother's going to come with that frequency. And I got to match that. Right, I gotta match the intelligence. I gotta be articulate. My heart, but I can't do that if my heart ain't even in the right place, right? And we don't even understand that, like by what we wear. But right, yeah, yeah, that's a whole nother. You feel thing me? Psychology. But just understanding. Actually, we touched on that last episode, last movie we did with Blue Pill. We talked okay. about the psychology of colors and the different colors you can wear for different days of the week mm -hmm. and what they do energetically as mm -hmm. you wear them. Because I'm always wearing black. Yeah, but there's a power. My, my color that actually aligns with my birth chart is purple. Okay. You understand me? So I should actually wear more, more. because that's my royal color. Mm, that's heavy. Yeah. And, and it's just us understanding, like, and for me, that means if 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 we're looking at how, I look, I, I, I look at everything from, again, a street perspective, because that makes it all make sense to me. But I bring it up to a higher frequency. So if my mind, if I'm looking at, how Apple and, and Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, if I'm looking at how these different games are playing a game, what game trying to conquer this? What game trying to conquer this? What game trying to conquer this? The one thing, the one thing I said was, okay, this would help me out a lot was I realized that violence, right, doesn't always have to be what's needed to be victorious. Absolutely. Right? I'm like, oh, so this is what happens. They just outthink one next person, right? They see this and you beat them to it. You you vertically integrate waves, right? So my mind, I'm like, all right, like how do I now play the same game on the same levels, right? How do I build a brand that does that? How do I become the person that stands in that? How do I become the influencer? How do I become the most impactful person, right? So what that means is I got to use the technology, not for what they want me to use it for, but I got to use it how they use it. That's a fact. Right? Because Mark Zuckerberg ain't around here just playing on the Oculus. He's on it so he can build a system for you to get on and play it. That's a fact. Right? Bill Gates ain't just on Windows to be on it. He, he built it so you can do this. Right? Amazon, Jeff Bezos ain't just ordering stuff all day. He built it so you can do this. Tim Cook ain't built Apple so he can play on the phone all day. He built, he helped enhance what was already so you know he can so I'm like all right I have to use this technology in the same way that the builders use it not the consumer use. Mm. and so how do I now become the technology because I got the intelligence to do it right and so how do I now help my people the people who are listening to Wall Street Travel how do I bring them up to my frequency how do I make them adapt my philosophy 
and get them from the philosophy that keeps them in a slumber, right. that no longer help them transcend. Yeah, that's that's allowing them to download a new mind frame. Yeah. You understand me? That so this is the reason I create concepts, because if I can give you my thought patterns, yep. you can think how I do. You don't need me anymore. Yep. You understand me? And I think that that's the key level when you get to. Now, everybody can't create a philosophy. Everybody don't have that. We talked about this before because some people are waiting on us to create the new thing mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that they can follow that trend. And so it's a trickle-down effect. You got to know what level you at so you understand the effect that you have, right? So if I put out like high level conversations. I want to put this out and change the game. Crazy game changer. You understand me? I'm like, bro, people loving it. We got to do it a certain way. Yeah. So that we can actually have impact across the board. Mm-hmm. Not just from my own, but I want to see other people step theirs mm-hmm. up. And that's how I know it works. Right? I want people to be like, oh, fuck. Damn. I got to I got to have a revision. Mm-hmm. I was thinking too small. I got to step it up. I got to change this a little bit. If we don't do that, the product ain't good. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Like if Apple put out some some new uh, AR glasses and they don't make all the players move on the board, ain't no good product. Ain't no good product. They're like man, I ain't worried about that. The man. product, the new product, supposed to make everybody rethink what they doing. Absolutely, and it's supposed to create barriers for competition. Mm-hmm. You understand me? And so, from a branding, a business, marketing standpoint, like if what you're doing is not creating a barrier for competition, then you're not putting out the right product. In fact, you understand me? And so. Even with you, as like if I'm looking at your brand, I say, where do, where is the where can Wall Street Trapper brand expand? Mm-hmm. And I look at you like a Snoop. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Snoop brand can go in any direction, mm-hmm. any tentacle on the planet. I think you have that same capability. Why? Is because you talk about stocks. Stocks is about businesses. Business represents products, mm-hmm. services, everything. Which means that now you have the ability as an owner of all these businesses and as an educator. You can brand based on different type of businesses you want to. Mm-hmm. You want to cooking with. Mm-hmm. I buy some Trappers cooking with. Right. You understand me? Right. Trappers cooking show. I'm right. on that. Right. That's your brand is so big that the universe of Trap allows for all of these different extensions mm-hmm. to happen. Some people are pigeonholed to where it's like, I'm not. It's like you talk about marketing. In certain ways, you build your brand so that it can consistently expand. Mm-hmm. Certain brand right now. Let's say if. Arm and Hammer put out the greatest uh, motorcycle. Ain't nobody mm-hmm. buying nah, that. Nah, we ain't rocking that. Because yeah. that brand was not built to expand mm-hmm. to fit inside that universe. Mm-hmm. But there's certain brands that can deal with that. Mm-hmm. Google may put out a, a, a bike and people, shit, Google is a high intelligent brand. Yep. You got to do some marketing. You're going to think about that bike as yeah. a high intelligent bike though. So right. now, damn, I want a Google bike. Right. I want an Apple car. Right. You understand me? Right. Like, so you have to be able to build your brand in a way it can expand. Mm-hmm. I know where my brand can expand. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Because I built a smart brand and therefore I can jump into different atmospheres. And mm-hmm. if not, I will build out a corridor for that brand to expand mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. area. So it's like with you, I can see a ch- children's uh, uh, toys. I can see mm-hmm. an amusement park. I can see all these different mm-hmm. things expanding around the Trapper brand because you've done a great job at leaving it open to where it's a universe. Mm-hmm. It's not a house. It's not a trap house. It's a no, universe. Right. You understand me? Otherwise, you become trapped in that house. Yeah. And you can't expand beyond that operation. Mm -hmm. So for black people right now, and and, and really when I say black people, anybody who watched this universally go get gems. Right. But I want to see us work to expand our brands and try to monopolize. Mm -hmm. You think in a t-shirt brand, think beyond that. Nah, that's a fact. You understand me? Think, think I wouldn't even sell the t-shirt. I would have, I would factor in the cost of the t-shirt mm-hmm. and then I would create another product where I give the t-shirt, t-shirt free as merch. Yeah. It's simple. It's simple thinking models, but when you talk about downloading your mind frame, this is the way I think. So I'm never going to think in the technical sense. I'm going to think abstract with everything, right? And abstract always has to have a quality of emotion for creativity to reign. Otherwise, it's copy paste. Mm-hmm. So now we at this place where you have to be the most creative to win because the technology is already created. Mm-hmm. It is there. Mm-hmm. Somebody made this phone. They built it out Web3. I ain't even got to build Web3. Mm-hmm. I already wanted to have more profit over my business and they're building the vehicles to have more profit. Mm-hmm. I have to understand the technology and the creative utility in which I can use it, which require my own creative uh, uh, um, intelligence. 
So creative intelligence, I figure, is one of the most important skills today and your ability to imagine. Mm. If you cannot imagine, you'll be stuck where you are forever mm -hmm. because you've done nothing that didn't become a thought in your imagination first. So that's where, as we utilize in these laws of the universe, and we talked about a multitude of different things, I want people to be able to impress upon their ability. And, and I've talked about this on um, 85 South Show, going from slave ship to mothership. Mm -hmm. And the simple concept was on the slave ship, we own nothing. We're owned by everything, mm -hmm. right? We're owned by the system, the institutions, our thoughts, our feelings, emotions, everything. Everything owns us. Mm -hmm. We have no control. Once we become self-aware, we break free from that and we go on into ownership. Now we take ownership and accountability, extreme ownership, our emotions, our energy, bills, whatever, family, anything that goes wrong, problems, which gives us power over the solution. Then we relinquish that ownership and we go for control. I own nothing, but I control everything. Mm. So it's like, I ain't got bills. I ain't renting. I ain't worried about the lease. And I'm operating like a steward of a trust. Now I don't own nothing. I'm controlling the assets. I'm controlling myself on the board. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking from a completely different spectrum. So now that I have control and I'm operating at this level, now I have to go towards mothership mm -hmm. because I'm now I'm not worrying about things financially. I'm not worrying about, you know, uh, purpose, none of the things. I got all that figured out. But now I get to play in my creativity and my mm -hmm. imagination. And when I look at some of these CEOs and these businesses, look at an Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. In order to be where he's at, he had to play, play with his, his imagination. imagination. I want to build rocket ships. Mm -hmm. That is a childhood dream. Yeah. You understand me? Playing with toys and you want to build. But look at the reality. But look at the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan when he had the Million Man March. Mm -hmm. He had an imagination where he seen a sea of beautiful black people standing in front of mm -hmm. him saying that I want to speak to the entire culture at once. Come on. That is that resonation of vibration and frequency that you're able to do that. Nobody was able to do that mm -hmm. ever from a call. Mm -hmm. So I think about that. I say, damn, when people say that one man can't do something or your person can't, do, I don't mm -hmm. believe in none of those limited mm -hmm. thoughts. Because in my imagination, that dimension has no limits. Mm. Everything can be changed at a moment's notice. It can be shift. Anything can happen. Now I got to take this dimension and I have to say, how do I have the power, number one? Because it ain't just think and then do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when you get on God level, mm -hmm. right? When you got a billion, when you had billionaire status, you had a billion ion status, mm -hmm. which means you have billions ions of energy that you can utilize to bring mm -hmm. any thought to reality. You can move things in a way that average person couldn't even think about mm -hmm. right now. So now I have to figure out how do I become that person that can operate these thoughts into reality? Because Farrakhan at 19 ain't the same Farrakhan that was able to have a mm, million people there. That's big. He might have had that thought at 19, but he had to become the Farrakhan that can move millions. Yeah. Right? And that's the same with any great person. Same thing with Trap at 19. Trap at 19 ain't the same brother that would have been able to build a brand nah. in front of the people. Yeah. Deal with different people. Yeah. This is the last question I want to ask you, too. I really want people to pay attention to this. Like, watch with mm. your kings, your queens. Give us the five stars. <laughs> My show producer told me to do this. But it's serious. We got to do number one globally, right? Raise the consciousness all across the planet Earth. All right. Back to us. <laughs> We well, can keep it real. I can. I, right. I, I want. I want, right. I want them comment. I want them five star. You know, feel me? I want to get to the top of this comment, thing. Comment, like, and level. subscribe, you know about? family. Yeah. Each one, teach one. Yeah. Each one, reach one. Yeah. Get ahead and run them numbers up. Yeah. First <laughs> way to prepare your baby mama and baby daddy relationship. Come on, let's subscribe go. Subscribe to that high level conversation. Co subscribe, <laughs> comment. You know you doing like, some work. <laughs> and share. We want you to do all the action steps. Comment, like, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, yes. you know, it's important. No, it's important to do to to give them the commandment, right? Because we are passing the high level conversation to you, and yes. if you join us in a high level conversation and you're excited about it, now you go take this high level conversation to to your homes, your households, your sisters, your brothers. Everybody needs it, and then then give them the assignment. Let them get this high level conversation and pass it on. And we just keep making this the new norm of us having high level conversations. So, yes. to, to Brother Key's point, let's let's do that. Ashe. <laughs> Yeah. This is the last question I want to ask you, too. Because you have a strong sense of self, mm -hmm. identity, 
but also you have a strong sense of individual brand and power. And I think that comes from the streets, right? In the streets, you don't need too many people in your business. No. Nah. Collaborating with too many people yep. is counterproductive yep. and counterintuitive. Yep. And as a survival mechanism, if the more that I can control and do this myself, the more power I have over the outcome. Yep. In this new world, we talk about collaboration. This is a collaboration. But I want to know, when it comes to your strengths and your weaknesses, how do you rank your ability to collaborate with people or large ideas? So that's, uh, that's something that I am still working on. Mm. Because one, so I have this thing about myself where, again, good or bad, depending on who you, who who hears it, I have to respect what you've been through to work with you. Mm. Like I'm, I can't just work with anybody, right? Because there's this, there's this wolf in me, where if I don't feel like you have that predator instinct, we not, I'm a you're going to feel some kind of way sitting next to me. Mm. You're going to feel some kind of way talking to me because I don't know how to, I'm learning. It's not there yet. That's what therapy is for, but I don't know how to not be that. Right. I don't know how to just, nah, I don't know how to be not forceful. I don't know how to be not like in power of a situation. Right. I don't know how to sidekick it. Right? I don't know how to agree with everything. Nope, I don't like that, bro. That ain't gonna work. Yeah. That ain't it. I don't see the vision. Right? So that's something I'm working on because if you come to me with something and I don't respect like what you've been through, it's gonna be a no for me. Mm. Right? And I and I understand that, you know, even in business, sometimes you gotta be diplomatic. Right? Shout out to Rashad. I always tell Rashad that. I say, bro, the great thing that you have that I respect, you diplomatic, bro. I don't have it. He is very diplomatic. <laughs> I tell him all the time. I tell him all the time. I say, bro, you are so diplomatic. I I, I, I respect that about you. I haven't made it that yet. Yeah. I'm still like, mm, I don't like him. Yeah. I don't like I it. I feel you. I don't like the idea. Something about that situation ain't sitting right with me. And Rashad can maneuver through that. Right? And I, and I respect like I always like prop him on that. And and for me, when it comes to enlarging an idea, the brilliance is there. Like if me and you come together, you know, we always yeah, that's done, like dude. we're gonna take an idea, cause I'ma see the idea at the best form. Right. Even we on a low level, I'ma right. see the yeah, potential. It's gotta be the high. I'ma think the high. I'm not thinking, oh, let's work out with you. Boom. I'm A one hundred. This is what yeah. it looked like. This is what it's supposed to look like, and we gonna enhance from there. So for me, that, that collaborate, no, I don't collaborate a lot. Yeah. That's why I ask, because I know. I don't collaborate a lot. I don't, when I go live on my Instagram, I don't go live with a lot of people. Yeah. I go live with the same two, three people. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? A couple other people. I'm not, one, I don't like sharing my platform with people who I don't agree with their philosophy. Mm. And you just like me in that regard. But I I think I'm more diplomatic. I'm not as diplomatic as Rashad. You better I, than me, though. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would say that. And sometimes I question how I'm able to do it. Right. Because, and I also know that even when I try to come off as chill, I still come off aggressive. You feel me? You feel me? And, you know, it, it's like you can tell that I'm being chill. Right. It's supposed to be natural. Like, right. I can tell you reserve yourself. It's adapted. To not intimidate. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> and not nah, listen, brother, you know, I just, I'm, I grew up in a man to man structure. Right. So it's like, I'm going to speak to you like a man. I might bust your balls. You right. Feel? We might just talk to each other how we feel. And I'm not always, I'm better at it now, but I didn't always have a regard for your emotions. Right. Because I felt like as a man, you should be able to rise right. above that and understand. That's that. a fact. But we live in a different type of society where men can't handle that. And see, that's me. Now, I'm going to stop you. At, I'm going to let you keep going. That's me. I haven't learned how to 
I think you still all supposed to always rise above your emotion. Mm-hmm. Cause that's me. Like if you be like, trap, I ain't feeling this, boom, boom, boom. For me, I can put that to the side and say, because I respect you and what you came from, we can have that conversation. Yeah. But if I don't respect what you came from, bro, don't have that conversation. Yeah. You ain't been through nothing. Yeah. Chill. Yeah. Right? Like know who you in front of in this moment. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like chill. Yeah. Right, and so that's necessary. You feel me? That's necessary because I think about every time I got into it with somebody, spe- specifically like in Oakland. We used to go out. We used to be wild, me and my brothers. Mm-hmm. We used to always go out with the bros. We always get into something, and I started thinking about why. I remember when I was working for Prada and had a job. It was a, it was it was interesting for me to be in that position because I never changed my energy while I was there. Mm-hmm. You understand me? But I learned to be able to operate in dynamics that made me uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You understand me? But I remember when we would go out, let's say I'm dressed in a suit or something, and I realized this dynamic that a wolf will always be able to smell another wolf. Yeah. You understand me? I don't care if you dress like a sheep or not. Yeah. I know that's a goddamn wolf. Here, yeah. <laughs> right? The yeah. difference is a sheep don't have the senses of a wolf. Yeah. So another sheep think they actually around another sheep. Yeah. You understand me? And so therefore they're going to do something as if they're dealing with a sheep and realize, bro, I'm a wolf. I'm yeah. I'm dressing like, like I'm chilling right now. Yeah. So wolves will always know, like, you know, if, if two wolves meet, it's only one thing that can happen if they go at each other aggressively. One of us so, not going to make it out of here. Somebody ought to go. Extreme injury or death. Yeah. So either we're going to have mutual respect to say, we not trying to do that right now. We're yeah. going to go our separate ways. Yeah. Right? Or we'll do nothing at all. Yeah. So, or it's just that mutual respect between wolves is different. Yeah. You understand me? Because yeah. it's like, I oh, respect, bro. Yeah. But then somebody else that's trying to speak in that same caliber, like, yeah. bro, if you don't chill your and ass See, that's out, me. Yeah. That, that's like my energy just gone. What? Nah, don't do that, fam. Yeah. But that's where society makes black men now is to do and suppress all that makes you alpha and who you are. Right. In order to assimilate for the rest of the world. Right. And so there has to be a time where we're comfortable with being ourselves, mm-hmm. speaking, taking up space, and living and existing accordingly to, you know, our natural laws. Right. And God. Right. But, and it's a really big but, this is why collaboration often don't work. Mm -hmm. Because you have sheep trying to work with wolves and sheep not knowing that they wolves. So can I say something, bro? One time you asked me about doing something. I'm not even going to say what it was. It was this large thing. Yeah. And I was like, I ain't really feeling that. Yeah. And it was because it was a mixture of wolves and sheep. Yeah. And... Again, it's still something I'm working on. Yeah. You dig? Like, I'm still evolving. I'm still developing. I'm yeah. still... I just don't know how to operate in that. Yeah. See, I start with the vision. That excites me, right? Yeah. So I'm at the vision like, yo, this could I know be. these niggas are just different, but if this happened... Yeah. Boom. It's like, you got Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and Jeff Bezos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That ain't going to happen. Yeah. But if they did, yes, they take over. Shit. Yeah. Now I'm thinking... Bro, if these work together, I'm calculating. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, this makes sense. Then you bring it down and be like, all right, what's what's feasible? Yeah. And then when the practical analysis starts to take place, it's politics, personalities, problems. Yeah. You understand me? And then it's like, all right, damn, the vision would be great. But because of the different personalities that will clash, it won't work. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's, it's, it's always trying to bring down my vision to print it into practicality. Mm-hmm. And then once I get the practical, put it back up to big vision. Because mm-hmm. now we got a framework with mm-hmm. things. You know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about? Fact. But that's the, that's the key to collaboration. I've worked with a lot of people and it worked over time. Um, but specifically my last collaboration, I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, I learned that you really have to be aligned with people. You have to. On different levels. And you got to be able to see past the vision, mm-hmm. see the people. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Your mission, your vision, and your values have to be aligned. Mm-hmm. Right? Otherwise, there's going to be a time frame of expiration yeah. for everything you do with another yeah. person. Yeah. Right? And so, if certain people that I'm aligned with, I ain't even going to say everybody's name. It's only a few. Mm-hmm. Like, really handful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then some people, they just ain't got it. 
And, and here's the thing about that, though. That's okay. But yeah, that's definitely okay. Right? Because like, sometimes it's better. Actually. It's better because, the, and the reason why I feel like that's amazing is because, like, every every situation is not a collaborative situation. No. Nah. Like, but still, not collaborating doesn't mean there's animosity, there's beef. There's, and I think that's one thing I don't like about our culture right. that we got to work on is that we feel like because two people don't have the same belief system that there's an animosity between, mm. right? Like, and I think that's bad with amongst our culture, yeah. right? It's, it's, a, it's a trained ideology, yeah. right? But I, I don't, one of the things I can say is like, what I love about the space that we in, I don't think no one doesn't like one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think right? there's levels of mutual right? respect. It's, it's, that's like everybody respects one another because you gotta respect somebody that get up every day right. to teach people. Yeah, it, it re- no matter what level, no matter you, what want, level you want, it takes a lot of it work. It takes a lot, and I think the, the respect for the work ethic is what everybody like meet on kind of yeah. ground. Like, yo, I see keys every day pounding the pavement, and I know, I may not know what his ultimate end goal, of course with me and you, we talk all the time, but I see that I know that this isn't easy. It's wear and tear, right? And you gotta find places to refuse so you can keep going, right? You may have to get off the media for a while. You may have to, you gotta find ways to recharge. And I think because we understand that, we know that, yo, that, that ain't easy. So I think there's always a respect. I think in our culture, we've, we've, we've disassociated respect for life, mm. right? Like I can respect you, but I don't necessarily have to agree with you. Right. And because I don't agree with you, don't mean I don't like you. That's a fact. And, and, and it takes me to the bigger, and we can close off on this point because it started off on this about collective intelligence. Mm-hmm. I think that what we have in our movement, even when we're not directly collaborating, is still a collective intelligence of everybody playing their part. That's right. Key. And that's a very powerful thing. You're automatically going to see some people closer than others, cool with others. I respect most people sometimes when I actually get to talk to them and I get to hear their mind. Communication. Because if I don't know your mind, I can't respect you. Mm. You understand me? I got to listen to you and see how you think. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes I can see a move on the outside, but it's not until I understand the man creating a blueprint. Mm-hmm. I'm like, now I understand why you operate mm-hmm. that way. Now I respect it. Mm. That's a completely different matter. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Because otherwise you left up to your assumptions and you're not going to, for the most part, when you assume, you're not going to assume higher or more. You're going to assume true. less mm-hmm. than what a person may actually be. So I got to respect you from your mind, I respect you as a man. You understand me? If I don't respect you as a man, that ain't gonna work. No matter how Fact. good you are, what you do, like, no, we gotta lock in here. Fact. You feel me? Because I, 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 like I said, I work with people and the intimidation factor kicks in. Always. I can never be a son, you understand me? And sometimes people just like bugs. You shine great in the room, but not in the universe. Mm, you understand me? I like that. And I'm a universal thinker. Um, a, a universal presence. You understand me? I'm gonna walk in any room and I'm gonna have that energy. Um, be able to appeal to people on different spectrums. And so it's not to compare because it's like wherever my light doesn't reach, that's what yours said. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But sometimes, you know, I'm gonna be big guy energy. And I think it was Ian that said something to me. He always said this shit about shout like- Shout out to Ian, man. <laughs> shout out to Ian. He, he was one person that he just throw something in your ear. Bro. Yeah. Chilling, you the greatest. I'm like, yeah. bro, chill out. Yeah, yeah. Chill out too much. yeah. But it'd be real in a sense to where it's like, what you realize is that not a lot of people actually tell you that. Yeah. You understand me? Where they, no, go hard. Kill mm-hmm. everything. You understand me? You the best. You understand me? Mm-hmm. And do it. Ain't nobody nowhere near the vibration in which you mm-hmm. pushing things. So the identity that you have about yourself is not ego, it's truth. Yeah. Not too many people go tell you that, mm-hmm. right? Most people will be intimidated by you, want you to and that's down that play it. so that they can feel bigger in your yep. presence. I'm not gonna make, I'm not gonna shrink myself so that you can get to a higher height. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna work like that. Mm-hmm. Peace, if you wanna be an affiliate of Gold Water Corp, tap into 323-577-6692. Text affiliate to that number. See you on the other side of greatness. Peace. So now we at this point, and I'm going to close on this, where I went to Egypt and I was looking at the pyramids and I'm looking at these big ass statues. These brothers were making them. Egypt is a vibe. Wow. I said, these brothers, 
they had these big old statues, which means they also had big old egos. And I don't think mm. black men had big egos. I ain't never enough. thought about that like that. Yes. I'm talking about, you talking about yeah. 30 foot statues. Everything around here is a representation of their worship. These are living men that are worshiped as gods, living. But then I also came to this thought yesterday that you never want to have more ego than knowledge. Oh, I'm about to say that, then they're telling me. You understand yeah. me? Because that's when you make a devil out of man, because you're operating from a place of ignorance. So now we're at this place where, and I know it's this, this controversial to say, I want black men to have bigger egos, but I also want you to be way more educated and knowledgeable. I like that. More resources. I like that. Because I think our egos go into the most materialistic bullshit. Yeah. But it ain't about, yo, I want to be remembered forever. I yeah. want to control the world. Like, that's masculine thought. I like that. You understand me? Yeah. So I need our egos to be at a higher level so it matches a vision that encompasses the world. Because think about the vision of those people who run the world. Yeah. You understand me? And it's yeah. not to say that we need to stay there and operate, but that's what we're going to need to be able to win and get to a place. That's a fact. To where our women will even feel comfortable because now... They're not walking in somebody else's world. They're walking in ours. And you got to think, too, like, in order for you, I remember, so I remember when I went to Egypt, um, so the first pyramid is, the first one is by uh, the Pharaoh Dozier, mm. if I'm not mistaken, right? So he created the Step Pyramid, and then he is in Upper Egypt, right? And he created it in Upper Egypt so that all of Egypt could see it. Mm -hmm. Right, and I remember being up there, and it's a it's a vision. So you you're up there, you see the pyramids of Giza, and then you see the bent pyramid, right? But his is the only one where you can really still walk in the valley. It's mm -hmm. in Saqqara, mm -hmm. right? So you can still walk in the valley, and actually they have a a, a a his tomb is outside, and so you can look in there and you can see it see the tomb right and i remember telling myself damn it's crazy as you said i remember telling myself when i saw i said he had a big ass ego yeah because that's the only way you can come up with a concept that says i want upper and lower egypt to see you mm -hmm. i want mine up here you know what i'm saying and so i like that concept that you said and i was because i was going to ask you is ego bad and I think that in that's in the way that we're using it, we're not using it from a low vibrational sense. Exactly. You understand? We're using it as a, a architectural framework mm -hmm. to where we can build Feel from. from it. I like that. Yeah. So in this, in this ego is transferable to vision and imagination. Yep. yep. Right. But it also goes to self identity that my identity is attached to this vision that I'm going to extend outward from self. Right. Right. And that that's why I have to qualify with knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because if you have this grandiose ideas, schemes, belief about yourself, but you don't have the knowledge to match, then that makes you ignorant. That yeah. makes you delusional. You understand me? And there's a lot of men today walking around with this amount of knowledge. I'm talking about with a little, this much ego. little grain, but they ego like this. You understand me? You do one thing and you believe because of the system magnifies ego and makes that into popularity that you operate from that place of how you filtered and seen through those illusions. Mm -hmm. Instead of actually, oh, my ability to produce things out my thought consistently is my excellence. You understand me? And my ego is telling me that because I've done it, you talked about past positive proofs, because I've done something before, I could do something great. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And so it's like, I will not only take my proof, I will take proof of other men throughout history. Mm -hmm. This brother did what in 1920s, 30s, yeah. 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 1990? Hannibal Barker was 22 years old when he conquered all of Rome. Mm. You understand me? He went on a war campaign and they still utilize his strategies today. Mm -hmm. You're telling me what, what, what? So also I think that what we think is ego is just a lot of times knowledge itself. It's a no. Yeah, I was about to get into that too. So, so, yeah. yeah, sometimes <laughs> we don't know where... It's actual just knowledge of self and knowing and where does the ego actually begin? Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like, no, I just have history of my ancestors and myself. You may quantify it as ego, but I look at it as reality. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And unfortunately, they forced us to condense our idea of ourselves to mm -hmm. so small that anything outside their ideas that they programmed into us, we think is ego. As, as a negative trait. And I think that's, that's key too, especially for us as like black men. 
right? That visualization of what we can create, produce, and become is so essential, mm. right? Because what can what we can create is astronomical. What we can be is rulers of the world, right? And what we can do is like infinite, mm. right? And if we get those things in to our perspective and say, you know, that's why I talked about like letting go of just the street version of me and evolving into the businessman of me, right? Because the street version of me, yep, it is instinctive, but it helped me survive that part of my life, right? So I can bring him to the table as an advisor, but he can't have authority mm. because he don't know how to live in this world. He only operates in one atmosphere, chaos. Mm. You know how to thrive in chaos. He can survive. He can make decisions. He can make judgment. And he's willing to say, I don't care what the outcome is as long as I did this. Mm. I don't care what the repercussions are. But that isn't a good businessman. Right. That isn't a good leader. Like a good leader says, with this, con with this action, this happens. And if the repercussions isn't, it's too severe for the people who I'm leading, then this isn't an action that I need to take. Right, and so for me and for us as men, black men, we need to evolve into leaders and that coincides with we need to get bigger egos because bigger egos help us use in the right way. Bigger egos operate in a high frequency help us be bigger creators. That's a fact. Right, so think about it. Let's go back to it. If a man says to himself, yo, I want three pyramids. That's a big ego. I'm still living. Don't even wake up. Slow it down. <laughs> Right? Start now. Don't yeah. wait up. Start now. I'm not playing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that's a big ego, but that's a man who sees something greater, but he also understands who he is. Yeah. Right? And I think for us, we don't understand who we are. We've only understood what they told us we are. Right. And until we peel back those layers, if I let you come find me as just a successful dope dealer, then I've let you come tell me who I am. But if I'm telling you that, no, I was only a dope dealer because I was put in these situations. I was born to be a king. I right. was born to be a billionaire. I was born to take my, I was born to do this. I just had to overcome that to get here. Now I've let, I've, I haven't let your story define me or the circumstance you put me in define me. I've let the knowledge itself tell me and dictate who I am. And I'm the architect mm. of this whole group. I'm the architect of this, right? And so as black men, as men, as high frequency leaders, as thinkers, as influencers, as educators, as, as thought leaders, as provokers, as pharaohs, as gods. Like, we gotta step into that. Step into that, like eating better, exercise, right. operating, being leaders, giving our women something to look forward to. Like, giving our women to say, yup, I want him to lead. Yeah. We wouldn't have this whole, now I'm about to get into, we wouldn't have the alpha female thing going on. Right? We wouldn't have the alpha female thing going on because she already knows, oh, that's the leader. Like a lioness doesn't say I'm an alpha lion. I'm a lioness. Right. I go hunt, yep. But when big dog get up, yeah. And, and, I ain't need to, and, I ain't need to go on that rant right now. Yeah. I'm gonna end on that last <laughs> point because I think one thing that every time I have a conversation about ego, I have to always leave it with this disclaimer. You understand me? Because I understand how dangerous the ego is. Because Ego often, we utilize it to separate ourselves rather than come together, mm -hmm. right? And the one thing I can say about the Egyptians is that they utilize their ego for collective mm -hmm. intelligence, mm -hmm. that they created systems to where it's like, the bigger this person's ego, the more they're gonna contribute to society. Mm -hmm. You understand me? That they're going to wanna add more pyramids, mm -hmm. they're gonna wanna add, you go to, to Carnut, every, this was built off every ruler having to add something to this spiritual mm -hmm. place. So now it's an intelligence, you mm -hmm. understand me, that's built into the idea of your ego being surrounded by your contribution, mm -hmm. right? Rather than your individualism. Mm -hmm. And so now that, that idea of ego is how I learn to collaborate with others. Because I said that my ego ain't going nowhere, but my ego is my I. Mm -hmm. I did this. I'm the great one. I'm the creator. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for this. Look at me. So I said, what if we take and we transfer that ego into the we. Mm -hmm. Look at what we did. And the reason I said that, because look how hard it is to work together. 
my ego is big enough to say that y'all can't work together with nobody, but I can. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So now I've transferred it from the we go to the to the ego to the we go. Mm -hmm. We talk about what we do together. So now when we go out and brag to the world, we bragging saying that look, we able to work together, but y'all can't. Mm -hmm. So now we transferred into something that's positive, utilizing the same energy, but we pivoted. Mm -hmm. So I say that because I don't want black men, women, and people to utilize the ego for a validation for separation. No frequency. Nah. If you go have it, we talking about what is your contribution when you go build something, same thing with celebrity. I don't care if you build a billion dollars if you don't add that energy back into the culture mm -hmm. where it's contributing to the factor of growth and productivity and efficiency. So that's my disclaimer for those who thought they would just go run with the ego. Nah, does the ego create abundance? That's responsible. Does the ego yeah. create abundance? Does the ego add value? Yes. Right? Does the ego, ego responsibly? Yeah. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? Like anything too bad, anything too much, anything a kid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We saw ego be the downfall of a many great people. Uh, I've personally watched it. Right? We've seen it. But also, it didn't start that way. But what happens is you got to, if you have it, you have to feed the ego moderately. Mm. You have to feed it because it can be a fuel. Like I do it. Like, man, I'm about to go kill this. Yeah. Anybody here on stage speaking with me, man, they're going to have a tough time. Yeah. In my mind, what I'm doing is, it's confidence, but I'm feeding my ego to tell yeah. me, yo, you are that great. Yeah. And if they don't come with that confidence, you're going to cook them on right. that stage. Right? But then after that, I'm still going to get on the stage with that, man, good job, fam. Like, you good. But I, I use that as a resource for me to operate in my highest form. My ego added abundance. My ego added value. Because now when I spoke, I made sure I spoke in a way that everything I delivered, it gave somebody something to. Mm -hmm. Yup, yup, yup. And now I added value. So again, that 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 using that ego to be able to add val value, abundance, um, life lessons to people, it is. But if you're using the ego just to be drunk off it, well, we gonna see you, right? You on demise. And then that's where you op. So when you operating your edge. Mm -hmm. You're going to perform at the highest level, but you also have a knowing that nobody else can do what I do. Yeah. You understand me? So no matter what this person does, how great it is, they still could never do yeah. what I do. Yeah. And my acronym for EDGE is Excellent, Dangerous, God EDGE. Mm -hmm. I like that. I just came up with that one. I, I see it, but I feel it. I, know it. That's, I like it. That's what we had. That's what this was about. It was about Excellent, Dangerous, God Energy. Tell the people before we close out, I usually don't even let people do this, but tell the people what you got going on. You understand me as far as, you know, Trap University, um, you know, and I want people to enroll in Trap University. Man, more than anything, bro, King, my brother, just, man, they can just find me on the Grand Wall Street Trap, right? Because I think this is too valuable. I'm gonna be honest with you. Normally, I'll be like, yeah, da, 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 da. yeah. But I think this was a whole master class. Yeah, really, it really, right? Was. This was a whole master class. Now I think put it on Patreon. Nah, like even if we could have, like I, I don't know how our brains would have been working. Yo, crap, we can do this, 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 this. <laughs> right? But I think, um, you know, just just follow, just handle, watching me on the gram. But I am building out my own network. Wall Street looks like us now network. Um, and I, in my mind, and what the vision for that, that my ego behind that is gonna be bigger than BET and CNBC. Mm. You yes, know sir. what I'm saying? I'll find that's me. that's that's I'm I'm standing on that. So I ain't rushing it. I'm I'm putting it together every day. We building it out. We putting it together. Being vertically integrated is is important for us, right? We see how Facebook and Apple are competing, and how Facebook got took up. A big slice of their pie got took out because Apple said, "Nope, I'm not letting y'all do this, 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 and this." Right? Not having his own platform, right? And so for me, it's, yep. You you can find me on Instagram right now, but in a minute you're gonna have to go to the Wall Street look like us now network. Mm -hmm. That's why I ain't even tripping on promoting that. Trap University is where we gonna be just educating, cultivating ideas, information, helping our people learn how to be great investors, entrepreneurs, businessmen, and women, but just high level thinkers. Yes, sir. Right, high level thinking. My goal, my mission, my core value is to show people who come from poverty, who come from the street, that they can also be six, seven, eight figure, nine figure businessmen, businesswomen, making freedom, generational freedom, the new norm for us, man. Mm. And that's what Wall Street Trap is all about, man. 
Well, man, this has been a powerful conversation. We went on the different laws of the universe. We talked about the shadow self. You understand? We talked about intelligent design. We talked about neuroscience. We talked about getting out the trap. You understand? To take over the map. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I like that. I'm 19 Keys. This is Wall Street Trapper. This has been a high level conversation. Tap in. Please. Oh, man. 19 Keys. High level conversation. Tap in with the guys. High level conversation, man, is exactly what it said. It is a conversation that needs to be had within our culture, man. It's the conversation that needs to be heard within our culture, man. I want everybody to tap in. I want you to come here empty so you can leave here full. I want you to come here empty so you can leave here refreshed. I want you to come here empty so you can get all the nutrients you need and the intellectual property you need to take you to the next level, man. High level conversation with 19 keys in the board of Wall Street trap. So man, every every time I talk to my brother, man, we always like dig deeper than the surface. So I think one of the things that's that's gonna be amazing for me is because every time I talk to him, man, our conversations are always refueling, right? So I know for sure, and they always give me a, another perspective on how we can attack, how we can do something. So I think now it's just me most so going looking at that future self. Like I said, like I always ask myself, like, what is the building that version of me doing? I think now, while I know now for now it's like that's the question i need to ask myself every day but also go and get the answers from him and i think that's important being cognizant and conscious enough to know that if i'm already doing that i just got to go tap into him so he can give me the answer so i can start now and get to where he at so that's that was a dope you know um conversation and a piece that we had that added something to my puzzle again man high level conversation man, i expect nothing less What's good, what's good, man? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. You are now tapping into a high-level conversation with myself and the guy, 19 Keys. I promise you, you will not regret this one. This one is going to change your life. Salute. Come on, man. 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 Come on,